It's time for Twig This Week in Google. Paris Martineau is here. Jeff Jarvis is here. We have a very special guest. You'll remember her from her website. Web3 is going just great. She writes about crypto. Uh, she's an expert in all sorts of interesting things, including web design. Molly White is here. We will talk, of course, about cryptocurrency, about SBF. I'll ask her who she thinks Satoshi Nakamoto is. We'll talk about the latest Google news. Yes, we even have a Google changelog, a fun show coming up next with Molly White. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twig. This Week in Google, episode 756, recorded Wednesday, February 21st, 2024. Good Thorpe and V it on. This Week in Google is brought to you by Rocket Money. If I asked you how many subscriptions you have right now, would you be able to list them all? And would you know how much you're paying on all of them? Now, if you'd asked me that question, I would have confidently answered, but I would have been wrong. Until I started using Rocket Money, I had no idea. Rocket Money has literally saved me thousands of dollars by finding and canceling subscriptions that I've been paying for for years. Rocket Money, it's a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It also monitors your spending, and I use it for that. It helps lower your bills. Rocket Money now has more than 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year, more than $500 million, half a billion dollars in canceled subscriptions. With Rocket Money, you can see all your subscriptions in one place. If you see something you don't want, you can cancel it with a tap. You never have to get on the phone with customer service. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash twig. That's rocketmoney.com slash twig. Rocket money. Rocketmoney.com slash twig. It's time for Twig This Week in Google, the show we cover the latest for going on in the world except for everybody except Google because we don't. Google's gotten less interesting over the years. <laughs> so we just, we, we've inherited the name. Paris Martineau is here. She is from the information. See, that's a good name. That It's always true. information. You could cover anything. It would always be information. That's true. I like how the title of this show kind of goes off the rails more and more. It's getting worse <laughs> and worse. The longer you do it. It really, it really just takes a nosedive as soon as you intro it. Well, for the advertisers, if we say this week in Google, they go, oh, good. But if we say, well, it's not, but it's not about Google, they go, what? <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. I don't really know where to go with this. <laughs> Jeff Jarvis is also here. Have I retired? It doesn't take a nosedive, Paris. It takes a flight, a fancy. A flight of That's true. Uh, a beautiful spiral dive that gets 10 points. There you uh, go. Speaking of spiral right. dives, he was the Leonard Tao Professor for Journalistic Innovation at the Craig Newmark. School of Journalism at the City University of New York, now deorbiting. Um, what do you think? You didn't sing, Paris. <laughs> what do you think? I didn't. Should sing. I I'm keep sorry, this? I was reading the chat. Should I keep this laminated uh, card, Jeff, or are we going to replace it? No, I think we. I think we. Yeah, we do something new. Yeah. <laughs> I would tear it up, but it's so nicely it's laminated. laminated. <laughs> I can't. You're now we're have very, to cut it. We're very serious here because we have got a very important guest, and I don't want her to get the wrong impression. Uh, we started talking about Web3 is going just great probably three years ago. I don't know when you started it, but Molly White, the creator, is here. Hello, Molly. Good to see you. Welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. Brilliant site that basically chronicles the demise of crypto, Web3, <laughs> NFTs. And you have this wonderful uh, little dollar amount in the lower right of how much money has been burned in the web three debacle we i love the flame isn't that great <laughs> it is it is yeah i worked hard on this <laughs> are you do you have web design background uh not really design but i'm a web developer okay. by sort of career history yeah yeah because you i know i remember you um said anybody wants to use this template there are other people using that same template of kind of the scrolling history and the, and all that right i mean i think that's cool that you gave that yeah. away 
Yeah, there are a bunch of sort of spin-off is going great websites that are not controlled <laughs> by me, which I was delighted by. So what is, what are like what? Like a Boeing is going great or what is it? Twitter is going Twitter, just great good. was like the big one. Yep. Yeah. Um I think there was one for Reddit maybe when they started sure. to really like close mm -hmm. down the API. Um but I think Twitter is really the big one. <laughs> it's perfect for it. It's one of those yeah. things where the stories just mounted up. Very it's nice. A franchise. Yep. You got a franchise. Ma, but I did not know this. I went to mollywhite.net, your website. I did not know that, for instance, you've been editing uh, Wikipedia. I think it must have been since you were in grade school. It says for over 15 years. Yeah, just about. I was like 13 when I started. Oh, my God. What was the, <laughs> what was the impetus to start editing Wikipedia? I learned that I could, and I was just kind of that kind of kid that <laughs> liked doing stuff like that. Um, I'm going to mess with it. And as soon as I realized I could, I was, yeah, I was off to the races at that point. <laughs> Under the... Uh, Did you tell your friends or hide this from your friends? I don't know how soon I told them, but eventually they knew. Yeah, that was kind of my thing. Was it a big part of your identity as a child? Bigger than you might expect. Yeah, I was. I mean, I didn't try to make it a big part of my identity, but people, like, as soon as they learned that I was editing Wikipedia in like high school, they got very excited about that because a lot of people at that point didn't really know you could, and they thought it was really fun that like a high school kid yeah. was writing Wikipedia. An editor. Do you remember the first um, citation that you edited? Uh, it was about unicycles, which was also <laughs> an interest of mine at the time. Well, and as we all know, <laughs> Jeff Bezos' father was a famous unicyclist. So, as we all know, as we all Is know, that true? <laughs> yeah. as one does. Yeah, you didn't know that. Maybe you want to get on his Wikipedia page and. Uh, yeah, I should go update the page. <laughs> you are a notable unicyclist. It says on your Wikipedia user page that you are both an administrator and oversighter. What the hell yes. is that? <laughs> Which one, the administrator? Or administrator, the I kind of get. Well, I don't know. What? Tell me. Yeah. But what's an oversighter? It's uh, it's part of a group of people that are called functionaries on Wikipedia that are people who have sort of the highest level of administrative ah, tooling, I nice. guess. And so oversighters have the capacity to sort of permanent, not permanently, but very strongly hide information that's been put on Wikipedia that needs to be removed for you know legal reasons or things like that so that's that's a very high uh, job that's a high title thank can i just thank you because we don't get to thank the people behind i mean i've thanked jimmy <laughs> wales but we don't Absolutely. normally get to thank the people who really are doing the day-to-day -day yeah. work on wikipedia wikipedia is the greatest thing ever i donate to it every month uh we use it like crazy uh, and it's people like you kind of unsung volunteers it's a miracle who make it it's a miracle <laughs> Let me ask you yeah, too. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Were you, when you started, was that the time when librarians were still saying, oh, beware of Wikipedia? Oh, yeah. I mean, they I'm still excited. are, but <laughs> even more then, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I would say they had more reason to back then, too. Yeah, yeah. It was definitely more mm -hmm. nascent. I don't hear that much anymore. I think that Wikipedia is now a, a miracle of human knowledge and um, with the obvious caveats, uh, an incredibly trusted source. I think, yeah, I think librarians and educators have gotten more understanding about it yeah. and they recommend to use it as sort of, as like you would any encyclopedia or that kind of tertiary source, um, you know, look at the references section and cite from there, that kind of thing. If I may, I'm curious now. So, so um, I say this with the highest honor, did your nerddom... <laughs> Start with Remember, Wikipedia. Remember, we're or all technology. nerds here, so we're it's all not nerds. an insult. This oh is, no, is, it's <laughs> it's a term I use for myself. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. Did it start with technology or Wikipedia? Would you say what? what where were you nerdy first? That's a great question. Um, probably with Wikipedia, honestly. Well, I mean, I always was the kid who wanted more time on the computer. Uh, <laughs> so, and actually, I was writing like sort of mini websites on Neopets before Wikipedia. Oh, yeah. So I, uh, yeah. I think maybe uh, technology uh, first. That's yeah. where a lot of... Uh, technically, that was my first HTML exactly. yeah. on uh, Neopets. It was either I discovered a shocking... 
Yeah, a shocking number of people in my sort of like computer science class in college got their start on Neopets. So I think we have uh, Neopets to thank for like my generation of web uh, so developers. Cool, actually, yeah. yeah, my daughter was into Neopets. Uh, it's still around, by the way. So I heard they they tried to get into crypto briefly, uh -huh. much to the chagrin of their community. <laughs> I think because of crypto, it's going to be the 25th anniversary this year, oh, or I guess next boy. year. Yeah, counting down. Get ready. Wow. Mere 267 <laughs> days. We're almost as old as Neopets. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> so anyway, Molly, you are uh, I, you're almost a visionary when it comes to uh, crypto and Web3. When did you start uh, Web3 is going just great? It was in late 2021. Okay. Uh, it was like December 2021, I think, is when I first So people kind of knew that maybe Web3 was hype by that point? Boy, it didn't feel like it. No, <laughs> there was a lot of uh, I hype. definitely felt like I was swimming upstream for a while with that website. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was... It was starting to get to the very inflated levels, I would say. Um, but things, you know, were still pretty high up there for a while. Um, but actually, if you look at it, I almost like I looked back at the timing one time and one of my first tweets ever about crypto or Web3 was like almost perfectly the top of the crypto market. <laughs> so I like I called it pretty closely. <laughs> and it's been all downhill. It's your fault, downhill maybe. Some might blame you. Yeah, I think I think it might be. Yeah. Has, has a well, yeah, mark you started it right in between the, the period of Bored Ape NFTs and uh, Facebook changing to Meta, which is really just, you know, <laughs> the apex of Web3. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely, it, boy, it was like I had finally gotten so sick of reading about it that I was like, I have to do something. <laughs> I love it. By the way, Molly's uh, Twitter handle is an, is is a, also a geeky joke, Molly0XFFF, which, of course, is hex for white. Shouldn't it have one more F, though? No? no, no. no? Well, it could have six or it can have three since they repeat. Okay. So I went so with three just to make good. it shorter. <laughs> yeah, let's make it simpler. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> uh, by the way, I, your, your timing is good because my, uh, my good friend Kevin Rose is 47 today. Happy birthday, Kevin. And he got a nice big birthday present uh, on February 16th. Kevin is the founder of the Proof Collective along with Beeple and some other uh, NFT folk, they created something called Moonbirds, which it wasn't even like the first. There were bored apes before them, and there were, crypt what was that, the crypto punks? In fact, I remember Kevin was so proud that he owned some very valuable crypto punks. So a couple of years ago, he formed the Proof Collective and created Moonbirds, including Mythics, Oddities, <laughs> Eggs, <laughs> Grails, and uh, oh. as I remember in the first, I think it was a month, he made $50 million. So much so that Kevin had to make a video saying, wait, wait, we're going to use that money for good stuff. Uh, anyway, I don't know what happened to Moonbirds, but I know what's happened to All Kevin. Because he just sold it to Yuga Labs, the creators of the Board Ape Yacht Club. They won't say for how much. Oh, God. Do you have any idea, Molly, how much he got uh, for that? I wonder. I don't know. It's probably, by the way, I like hashtag shady business. <laughs> Just in case you're, <laughs> in case you're wondering. Uh, it probably was a fire sale. I can't imagine. NFTs are pretty much over, aren't they? Nobody's Nobody thinks there's any value in these things anymore, right? I mean, you would be surprised at how much these, at least ostensibly, are trading for these days. There's some, you know, sort of blue chip NFT collections like the Board Apes, for example, that still change hands for People tens still of thousands buy of dollars. Them? Wow. Yeah, not not at the levels that they once were. Like you probably won't hear about a million dollar Board Ape transaction anymore. But uh, they're definitely still spending. More money than you might expect. <laughs> just just so people what? understand, you're not buying anything uh, at all except the, the nominal ownership of one of these uh, low-res cartoons. Hey, Leo, <laughs> that's a right clicker mentality. These things are worth a lot. <laughs> I am a right clicker. I'm an old. <laughs> yeah, what's how much is 2.28 ETH worth nowadays? That's a lot. That's still money. It's yeah. I mean, that's pushing ten thousand dollars these days. Wow, that's the most valuable. Of course, because he's got a cowboy hat, number 762. <laughs>
Um, I have to say, I do think the Moonbirds are cuter than the Bored Apes. I will give them credit. Vaguely racist. Not not a hard scale. Uh, Yes. I I think you can make a a decent case that the apes are a little bit racist, aren't they? And there's. I've certainly heard people make that case. Yeah, and there's Nazi uh, symbolism in some of it, and it's uh, it's a little. uh, Anyway. Is Gary Vaynerchuk still uh, gung ho as is his wont? Uh, I, as far as I know, he's he's certainly still talking about it, but I don't know if it's his primary. I wonder. He's a good friend with uh, Kevin. I wonder if uh, he was part of the Proof Collective. Uh, he might have been. It was a number of number of people. Um, there is an art angle on this, right? I mean, in fact, initially we thought maybe this would be a valuable way to support, kind of, to be a patron of the arts to support artists. I um I have a beautiful remember the fail whale <laughs> probably before your time. Yes. <laughs> no, I remember it well. When you were in kindergarten. Yeah. yeah. The fail whale looms large in yeah. my memory, Leah. So okay, good. All right. So the fail whale was actually from a drawing by uh, a great uh artist, uh Yi Ying Lu. Um and she had drawn it before. Twitter actually stole it, basically. She had drawn it before. but And we have, uh, she drew for us, uh, my wife and me, she drew us one of these. We have it on our wall. We wanted to buy some others. And now you she- you have a custom fail wheel yeah, on I your wall? I can't remember if it's a fail wheel. Wow. It's something from Yi Ying. But anyway, yeah, she brought it to us. She, we had her on the show some years ago. But uh, you can't buy- her stuff physical anymore. We wanted to buy some more. You can only buy NFTs. Now, maybe she's changed her tune by now. But, uh, yeah, that's weird. But I, I, w- I would support her because she's a great artist and it's fun. But I would prefer to buy something I can hang on the wall. And printing out a, a, a moon bird and putting it on the wall just doesn't have the same... <laughs> Cachet. You can buy one of those TVs that shows NFTs now. I oh, hear that's yeah, an NFTV. <laughs> NFTV. Oh, jeez. Mm-hmm. That's our next million dollar business idea. I don't know why they didn't go with idea. that branding because I've I've heard about the <laughs> NFT TVs, but that's I've never heard them called name. that. <laughs> Some yeah. missed opportunity. Listen. And I'm looking at when I go to the Proof Collective, Proof.xyz, I see really exhibitions of. <laughs> I know. It's not great art, but <laughs> grim. Please, please don't laugh at them. They're trying their best. No, I'm I'm serious. <laughs> this Quite is serious. Uh, uh visions, a first solo exhibition by Otherworld. Anyway, happy birthday, Kevin. I hope you buy a very large birthday cake for yourself. Probably all all he'll get for it. I feel really or an NFT of a birthday. Of, game. Oh yeah, that's right. Let's not <laughs> let's not actually True. bake. Let's not bring this into the physical world. Molly, when are you going to do AI is going just great dot com? I get asked that a lot. Uh, it's not on my to do list, um, but I I do try to point people to there is a project called the AI Incident Database, which Ooh. is really quite oh, I do valuable. Like yeah. Yeah. It, it does sort of a similar thing. It doesn't have the sort of sarcastic editorializing that I put into my stuff, but I um, love your stuff. It, it does a good job of capturing some of the going great of the AI world. So you both though uh, of F company. Yes. <laughs> my pod, Philip Kaplan. Do, do you know that uh, Paris? No, what is F Company? Oh wow, this was a well. Great that's that's a, that's actually a TV show. We're gonna F Company is a F Company. It's I would say it out loud. Uh, spread it, spell it out. You know, in the in the oh, vernacular yeah, 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 yeah. of the yeah. F Company was a show that Leo could probably show you a clip from, and we could reminisce about. But <laughs> we won't go there. Um, so it was it was the it was the it was the web. It was the two thousand crash. All of the companies that just exploded. When the oh, VC it's a parody of Fast. No, it's not a yes. parody. Yeah, no, well, was... the name was, but what it was well, made the, the up of was memos yeah, yeah, yeah. from these companies, real memos. Yes, actual oh. holdings and layoffs. Oh, and, I love this. Oh, it was great. Uh, I have a mug somewhere here from FK. I remember Pud's telling me. That's great. The, be- the His goal in life was to create a series of sites like this that he didn't have to do. Once he created it, he yes. didn't have to do anything. That all the content would be provided by people sending in memos and so forth. It's interesting because Eft Company was started in 2000 during the bust. Right, right. And went out of business in 2007, right about when Twitter started to ascend. 
And it, yeah. in a way, wow. Pud was it, Pud was a genius because isn't that after all what Facebook, Twitter, Reddit are? Is uh, is you know the next generation? You of... do all the work, we'll collect mm -hmm. the money, yeah. basically. Yep. Speaking of which, uh, Reddit has signed a deal with an unknown AI entity for $60 million a year. We know the number because uh, they're headed towards an IPO uh, to ingest their content, our content. Oh, did I say their content? Well, yeah. our, con <laughs> our content. Is there a um, furor over that? You know, I don't know. The no, there isn't. I think people don't yet really, haven't really ingested the notion, even with what happened to Twitter that these companies are really just using you. <laughs> YouTube does the same thing, right? Yeah. yeah. And they, they highlight also, the people Well, YouTube like, shares revenue. Well, they highlight the hundred or so people who make money. But right. I can tell you, I mean, most of us on YouTube are not making a lot of money. Are AI companies not already using Reddit's data? I would have just assumed that that was a part of the big corpus that they all used. They, they Well, they, like a medium turned off the robots.txt for AI companies. The AI companies say they're respecting it, but you're probably right. <clears throat> you're probably right. What was it used <laughs> for the original training sets? Right. Yeah. yeah. So maybe is well, that I do the... think it's important to know you're on a podcast with two AI accelerationists here. Leo and <laughs> Jeff have been red hey, hey, over no, the No, there's kind of, of just one. <laughs> Okay, Jeff, you, you've you been getting over there. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm putting you in the bucket. <laughs> I am Are no Andreessen. I still have my. I hair. am the I am the sole person with a brain cell remaining here. <laughs> Whoa! The doomer, as they call it. Yeah, the doomer. So I, Molly, was a doomer. In fact, I thought the whole thing was just spicy autocorrect for the longest time, and then I started uh, creating uh, little GPTs and stuff, and I got one over. And then, very famously, I went on a walk. With an AI accelerator. You went on a walk with like Sam Altman or it something. It wasn't anybody famous. He won't tell us who it was. <laughs> but went he went on a walk and he came a, back with, a changed with a, man. With a guy who is from San Francisco who is absolutely an AI accelerator. Well, I figured that out. And and he convinced <laughs> me on the uh, over this hour period, <laughs> over this two mile walk, that he hypnotized uh, Leo. He, that it's he. You know the thing that I'll, stays with me. I think about it all the time. He says the next ten years are going to be really weird. He also that is the thing that convinced you. Yes, I could told you that, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> but in a good way. He also <laughs> he also uh, uh, said it's going to be like first contact with an alien species. Oh, for Christ's sake! See, Paris. Yeah. I'm so now Leo like thinks. Now Leo and Jeff both think no. that AI should have access to everything, and AI. Has I do the right. think. Oh, that. that's where she's been. Blah, blah, blah. She's the writer. For the site mm -hmm. and well, doesn't so want Molly. her precious words used to trade the machine. We got two That's writers here. I don't think we well, should she's just be giving stuff away for media. free to mega corporations. See, here's the difference. I mean, I've been writing Wikipedia for a long time. Yeah, so you've been giving it away. And, and, and yeah, you're, you're the Twitter. old copyright yeah. hag here, Paris. <laughs> only Paris. Old copyright hag. I'm gonna put that in my Twitter. Bio. <laughs> That's so, so mean. Joe Esposito. <laughs> so mean. Um, I think. You could make the case that Jeff and I are at the end of our creative ropes. <laughs> hey, I got books coming out. And so we care a little bit less than you younger people who oh, have many years ahead of you and you will hope to make a living on your content. No, like Molly, we're generous, unlike you, Paris, behind That's the true. high I'm paywall. Famously ungenerous. Yes. As I move more and more of our stuff behind a paywall. <laughs> Um, you just moved some back. shows out from we the did. paywall. Yeah, it really. I I I dislike paywalls. I really do, and uh, and I I. It's funny because I'm also a utopianist. I think Wikipedia is the best example of what the internet hath wrought. I mean, it's incredible. And yeah, there's mistakes and there's errors in Wikipedia. For a long time, my Wikipedia article said I wrote for Hustler magazine. Not true. <laughs> but, but the, it's self-correcting. There are people like Molly who put that energy in to make sure that content is good there uh, is an amazing gift. I mean, that's all volunteer work, right? Molly, you don't get paid to do that. Right, that's correct. Did I tell you this, my Wikipedia story, what the student thought from it? No. I told you that. No. One day I'm walking down the hall at school. student comes out, very excited. 
and says, Jeff, Jeff, I just read on Wikipedia that you're polyamorous. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to join our coven? Well, yeah, so I said, no. Can you correct that for me? Because I can't do it. <laughs> so That's very funny. I am always very, I've never touched my Wikipedia page. I'm always very careful Ooh. not to do that. I think I may be unique in that regard. Uh, because I think there are a lot of people who are, especially politicians, who are going in there pretty regularly, fixing their stuff up. Every once in a while, you come across a page, you read it, and it's, oh, the, that's definitely the company wrote that. Yeah, yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. But I this, like when it has the little note up top that it's like, this reads like the company wrote it. Yeah, the shame, the shame yeah. banner that I goes up that. there. <laughs> yeah. Always, always read the, uh, the, the, the talk section on any page that you have suspicion about because people like Molly are very good at that. Indicating, I wonder what they say here. It's B, <laughs> this is a B class. I'm a B class in the- uh, You're a B class, so writing is a B class. Oh, well, I didn't write it, so I don't take responsibility <laughs> for that. Uh, a photograph should be included. Well, also, can I send them a photograph? Look at that header, photograph. though. What's the header here? If you scroll down. You oh, got kind yeah. of a salacious. Oh <laughs> my goodness! <laughs> oh, that's interesting. So there's a debate about <laughs> sex scandals to go in here, right? Back in 2011. Yeah. Th by the way, if if you're waiting for sex scandals about me, you got a long way to. Uh, <laughs> I wish there were, but uh, anyway, uh, this is interesting, huh? I actually haven't looked at this. Probably shouldn't look at it on the air either. <laughs> Uh, it's it, but no, I think this is what's great about Wikipedia is, it, and it works. How come it works when so much else is, you know, crap? It's honestly such a good question. <laughs> I don't think any of us know. Because and, and the other thing about it is, there's a very small number of editors, right? It's a small number of people keeping this afloat. Relatively small in terms of people who edit regularly um like but we you. get a lot of people right but there are a lot of people who will edit once you know or fix a typo when they see it and so there's a you know a substantial amount of that as well um do but they yeah, love the teachers who bring classes in to do it students yep. feel very empowered when they do it yeah some in college professors have started yep. having students write wikipedia articles for uh coursework and stuff like that too which is really interesting so you don't have any theories about why Wikipedia has survived? I do. I mean, I think it helps that it was it's a nonprofit. Um, you know, a model like this I don't think would work well as a for-profit entity. Um, you know, people, I think it was partly timing. Um, you know, it emerged at a time where there was a need for something like this. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I think that, a project like this really sort of plays to people's sort of altruistic impulses where, you know, people want to be able to help when they see something that's wrong or, you know, that's missing from an encyclopedia. And so it attracts people who have that kind of impulse and are really strongly motivated to keep it, you know, this sort of beautiful resource that they want it to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's really unique. I think a lot of platforms have tried to emulate it and have really not had a very successful time of it. Um, I remember when Twitter was debuting their, I guess it was it used to be called Birdwatch. Now it's Community Notes, I right, think. Right. Mm -hmm. And they were like, yeah, it's going to be just like Wikipedia and people are going to go out of their way to write good facts to, to fight off the bad facts. And I was like, mm, good luck. <laughs> and, you know, now it's sort of become a, it, it works sometimes, but you see a lot of sort of missing pieces in there. Well, one, I, one, of, one of the sites I think about is Quora, which mm -hmm. was, a, I thought, a really interesting idea. Uh, people ask questions and then answer them, and it's also volunteers. Um, they're, they're under kind of a, assault from AI. Same with a, a stack. A stack. Quora has a bad How does Quora it? make money? Is it just ads? I think it's ads. They just raised seventy-five million dollars from what? from really. <laughs> Why? From Andreessen Horowitz, nice. Of course. Oh my yeah, gosh, Andreessen Horowitz. Isn't there something better you could be doing with your money? No, this is AI. This know. is their this is their whole thing. Poe. Poe is a chatbot. Their AI chatbot. 
And the idea, of course, is Poe is 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 taking all of the stuff that people contributed to Quora and turning uh -huh. it into a, a chatbot, right? Poe will be the go-to chatbot for asking, how is Babby formed? <laughs> <laughs> how do women get pregnant? <laughs> now, that was Yahoo questions. Let's be fair, right? This is, we've, come, <laughs> we've come a long way since then. So in 2005, I went to an event at Harvard with bloggers and the New York Times was there. And Jimmy Wales got into it with uh, Jill Abramson, then the managing editor of the paper, where she said, you don't understand how expensive it is to have a Baghdad bureau. And um, Wales then said, and I'm quoting this in my next book, he said, five years ago, if I sat here in front of this group or any other group and we discussed the Encyclopedia Britannica, which in the latest numbers I can find now in 1996, they had a budget of 350 million. And if I said to you, I'm going to get together a whole bunch of people on the internet and we are going to write an encyclopedia that is going to kick butt on Encyclopedia Britannica, you would have said, that's crazy. How could you possibly do that? It would cost you millions and millions of dollars. It didn't cost millions and millions of dollars. We did it. I love that spirit. Pretty powerful. And yeah. Jimmy Wales has always said, you know, I mean, people have said you could make a billion dollars a year if you take advertising. I remember Jason Calacanis yelling at him yeah. at a conference. Yes. Saying yeah. you should I put mean, ads, you, you're wasting. Yeah. So who wins now? I think uh, in hindsight, Jason was the idiot and Jimmy was the bright guy. No, By the way, <laughs> not just in hindsight. I not think. just for, <laughs> at the time, even. Uh, yeah. Slate had an article this month about Quora dying because this is exactly what hasn't happened to Wikipedia. Users are leaving, it's flooded with spam and bots and low quality stuff. Is it because. Wikipedia exists that Quora couldn't, or is it because there's they took ads, or is it just luck? I mean, Quora is fundamentally very different than Wikipedia. Yeah, I don't think it's they're in the same question. Is it? Yeah, I don't obnoxious. think the existence of Wikipedia precludes something like Quora. I think they're two fairly different use cases. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely two different models there. Um, I think one thing that helps when you're talking about volunteers is with Wikipedia, I don't feel like some big corporation is making money off of the work that I right. put into that. Right. Whereas with something like Quora or, you know, community notes on Twitter, it's like, why am I doing this for free for a company that is profiting for, you know, from my contributions? Exactly. Um, yeah. Exactly. Which, the other yeah, thing too is that, is that about.com was really the first competitor, commercial competitor to Wikipedia. Same idea, Wikipedia. right? But also commercial, yeah. Yeah, if people are asking questions, we're going to have the answers. Right. Was the idea. So we had guides, right? And I consult, full disclosure is I consulted for them when the Times bought But them. it was an SEO play, but right? The idea was... It was, it was people, absolutely, it was the yeah. first SEO play. Right. Yep. That's why the Times bought them, was to learn SEO. And so it was trying to play that game. Others learned that from them. That created the content farms. That ruined it for everybody. That was the Panda update to Google Search, the first big update. That our friend Matt uh, Cutts uh, Yeah, that degraded all of that. Yeah. Whereas Wikipedia always stood apart. Right? It was a different thing. It wasn't trying to play a God game of bless SEO. It, it just I, said, we're here with answers. Uh, right? it's, it's Somebody's got a, I don't know, is there a documentary? Is there, I feel like this needs There's to- There's a bunch of books. <laughs> yeah, because it's such a case study in what the internet could be. Yes, and there's and it asks and there's so many poses so many questions about why and uh, and how you get communities to do this. I think it also tells you that people are fundamentally good. Um, that they will act. The four I include in my book are Wikipedia, Craigslist, Reddit, and WordPress. Yeah, are examples I think of the web done fairly right. Which book? Uh, the Web We Weave, coming out this fall from Basic Books. <laughs> well, as long hey, as we're drink. plugging, Molly Wood has a newsletter. Molly Wood. Molly White. I used to work with Molly Wood. Molly White has a newsletter. <laughs> I get confused with her fairly regularly. Yeah, I know Molly well. She used to... She used to uh, Mo different Molly. Different Molly. Molly well, Molly Wood, and Molly White. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Molly Well was my favorite, though, right? I love Molly Well. <laughs> yeah. uh, Molly White's newsletter, I'm so sorry, is Citation Needed. And uh, if you want to subscribe, please do by going to citationneeded.news. Have you been approached for a book on um, your site, Molly? I have not. No. <laughs> I'm surprised. I think, I think there's one in the, I think it's a fun one. Absolutely. I almost, actually, I almost start with F Company. 
and yeah. go through. Oh, you mean on, on Web3 is going just great. I see. Yeah, I'm starting to Web3, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I have been approached for a book on that a couple of times, but uh, what do you think? I don't know. It didn't really speak to me. It didn't feel like, um, I, I could sort of tell that there was going to be a flood of the crypto crash books, which there oh. have been. And I didn't necessarily feel like, you know, I, there needed to be another one for me specifically. <laughs> I think there's something bigger here. I think it's, I think it's about boys and their stupid ideas. <laughs> I think that there's a great book yeah. in boys and their stupid ideas. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and also and kind of the, the cult of Silicon Valley ambition. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've written br more broadly about that. You know, I, I've written a little bit about some of the venture capital stuff, some of this weird, like, Silicon Valley ideology that has emerged, um, but all, all in sort of shorter formats. Would you like to write a book? I don't know. <laughs> it's a lot of work. I like me. I like the the short form format yeah. a lot, and I'm not sure. Yeah, it spoils if I, a person. Yeah, I don't know if I would love to write. You it tweeted before. recently about starting. A, I don't know if you're. It was tongue in cheek, but you were quoting Indie Web about you should have your own blog and your own CMS, and then but it looked like you were starting your first blog, right? Or no? It's not my first blog. It's yeah. probably my twentieth blog. Exactly. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've been working on a project to um, sort of do more of a, if you know what, like the posse approaches for the yeah. indie web. Post, you know, post, post on your own site, signal, syndicate set, elsewhere. Syndicate yeah. everywhere, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I've been working on a, a project to do a little bit more of that nice. on my own website to just, because I, I post in a lot of places, but there isn't one good, like, you know, unified place for it. And so I've been working on just a little project to tinker on in my spare time. It's which, which of the social networks do you like best? Personally? I like, I right now I like Mastodon and Blue Sky a lot. And I don't know if I like one more than the other at this point. Um, they're very different. What would you say, what in instances view? on Mastodon are you in and what, how would you describe the difference tonally between Mastodon and Blue Sky? So I'm on the hacky derm instance on Mastodon, which I think is the best one personally. Uh, <laughs> well, really I might fun. disagree with you. I certainly like Twitter <laughs> social also. No, hacky derm is very good. But the nice yeah. thing is you can follow Molly White on any on any of them, right? You don't have to. Right. You don't have to be on any. Yeah, one. you don't have to join the hacky derm one. Yeah. But, but it is local, really nice. Yeah, I think the it's local timeline's well. important. I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, then, then you get a certain personality from the people who are local, but you can still follow the rest. What makes Hacky Derm good? Tell us why I should move everybody over to Hacky Derm right now. <laughs> I think they've done well at moderation. Um, it's a very sort of balanced approach, I think. Uh, it attracts a lot of software people, and I like software people on my timeline. Uh, and I think a lot of them have really interesting things to say. Uh, you know, a lot of like security folks who I always find very interesting, even though that's not my own niche. Um, and I don't know, it just feels like a really friendly community to me, you know. See, that's what I love about Mastodon. There. You have that sense of a smaller community, but you can also follow people on every community. I think that's, right. that's fantastic. And nobody owns it. Moderation's interesting because uh, some sites are not well moderated. Right now we're going through a Another one of those bad phases on Mastodon over the last few days where the smaller sites are letting spammers on and they're spam. I don't know if you guys experienced it, but I've, I've had to swat about 30 or 40 spam accounts. Um, You've had to swat them. You uh, called the, I FBI call, uh, I call the FBI and send it to their homes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, only no. a handful the only of people way. die. No, I just, I just suspend their More accounts. More powerful than you know. No, I just suspend their accounts. That's all I do. Here's uh, Molly on uh, on Hackyderm. It's Molly, uh, also 0xffff at hackyderm.io. I'm, I'm uh, proud to say I was already following. Yes, as was I. <laughs> Actually, that's how I got uh, I thought about getting Molly on the show. She followed me. I don't know why, but uh, when I saw that, I said, oh, maybe I can get her on the show if I do that. <laughs> oh, you do your own, uh, is it a show, Crypto Critics Corner? I guess it's a sh I guess show is the right word. That's not mine. I was just a guest. Oh, you were on, on it. it. Okay. But okay. Yes. Yeah. It's a wonderful podcast, though, for anyone who's looking for more crypto skeptics in their life. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find uh, tell many... us about about Go ahead. the um, uh, the hurt feelings of the crypto boys and you? 
They must come to you and just say, you just it's don't understand. It's more hurt wallets, I yeah. would guess, than hurt feelings, right? Um, yeah. Depends on the month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got a lot of uh, a lot of that. Yeah, I just don't understand it after two years or something like that. Yeah, um, but uh, you know, my favorite one is in. well, the technology though. The underlying technology is really good, and oh, you yeah. know, you're conflating what people are doing with it with with blockchain, and blockchain is so much going for it. And I have to every time I say no, it doesn't. <laughs> the next ten years are just going to be really no, weird. No, you doesn't. don't get it. Hey, uh, stop it! Be That's <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. I get, or the the other one I love is we're, it's still early. You have to still give it early. some more time. <laughs> it's like it's been fifteen years. Yeah. <laughs> it's has it been? I have to say one thing about pyramid you schemes. Count Bitcoin as the start. Yeah, it, yeah. With wow. pyramid schemes, it can never be too early. The early, <laughs> you, it's too late almost always by the time you hear about it. So <laughs> don't don't do it. That's all. Um, do you think? Who do you think Satoshi Nakamoto? Nakamoto, not, what is it, Nakatomi? No, that's uh, a... Nakamoto. <laughs> yeah, had it the first time. <laughs> what, what is Satoshi? Is you think that Craig Wright is really Satoshi? No. Absolutely not. That's ridiculous. <laughs> it, yeah. I actually have an answer to this, uh, which is for the long... Like, God, this is probably a year or two ago. Um, everyone at the information, or at least all the reporters, started getting the same weird email from someone being like, in all caps, like, I know who Satoshi Nakamoto is, I know who he is, like, I might have gotten this email. I'm sure you, <laughs> listen, I'm sure you did, because we also then got it on Signal, we got LinkedIn messages, and you clicked through, it was like, I've put together all the clues. Oh, God. It's Elon Musk. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, who else, who else was in San Francisco at this time? They both used double space spaces at the end of their pyramid periods <laughs> yeah. the clues are all there people uh, and if you add i definitely really, got that same email <laughs> i am uh, it was it was a doozy it really entertained me for quite a few hysterical. weeks yeah wow. wow we don't know who satoshi is but i think well first of all if craig wright were satoshi he's right now uh in a in a He's suing somebody for libel, is it? Or I don't know. There, there's a court case there's going a, on. In there the are a lot of court cases going on with yeah. Craig Wright, but I think he's actually being sued he's right now. He's being sued. Okay. And he by could, Jack Dorsey. <laughs> by Jack Dorsey? What? It's a yeah. It's a group that's funded by Jack Dorsey, among other people, uh, that's suing Craig Wright because he keeps. Craig Wright keeps filing basically IP lawsuits against Bitcoin developers and Jack Dorsey and all these people are really fed up with him basically scaring away the Bitcoiners this or is the, the Bitcoin developers. This is the trial going on in England uh, right now. And right. the thing is, Wright could easily, if he were Satoshi, it'd be easy to prove you're Satoshi. Just move a fraction of a Bitcoin from one of those dead accounts. Well, he claims that he destroyed the hard drives. Oh, but, oh yeah. isn't that convenient? It's very convenient, yes. That's a shame. There's a lot of convenient explanations yeah. in this trial. So The fact that there is so much money in those early Bitcoin accounts, presumably controlled by Satoshi Nakamoto, if that's a person or group or what, and have they haven't been moved, they're worth billions. Right. Does that imply that it was a person is gone? Or, or that they're sitting on it, waiting for the, waiting for it to go up, or what? It depends who you ask, but personally, I think there's a reasonable chance that he's dead, yeah. and that's why the the money hasn't moved. Yeah. But. Or also, I mean, if those accounts had any sizable movement, like if someone suddenly started uh, selling the bitcoins in those accounts, bitcoins worth would crash. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, well, that that's would an be interesting quite point. a day. <laughs> yeah, the, the, it's 1.1 million uh, bitcoins worth about, well, it depends on the time of day, but about 30 to $40 billion. Uh, I don't know, if I, were, if I were Satoshi Nakamoto, if I'm some guy, it's got, he has to be uh, some sort of cryptographer, mathematician. It's pretty sophisticated stuff. If I'm that person, you might just say, well, I'll cash in right now and... And buy an island. I, I, That's I don't, what I'd do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, so what, right? Uh, who, what does he care if it crashes? Do you think he has some sort of vested interest in it succeeding? I don't know. Anyway. Um, Have you read Chris Dixon's book, Molly? 
I have. I wrote a re- review of it, actually. <laughs> I thought you had. What did you think? I did not enjoy it. Tell, <laughs> us, tell us, first of all, what it is and uh, who he is and all of that. Chris Dixon. Yeah, so Chris Dixon is a general partner at Andreessen Horowitz. He does a lot of their crypto investing, and there has been a lot of it. And he recently wrote a book called Read, Write, Own, which is basically laying out his philosophy and his belief that you know, there have been two eras of the web thus far. There was the read era in the sort of earlier days and then the write era with the advent of social media and things like that that have made it easier for more people to post online. Um, and his theory is that the third era of the web will be the own era, which will be enabled by blockchain technology. And so he writes this manifesto kind of on how blockchains will somehow become the future of the web and, you know, enable all of these wonderful things that we currently are not able to do. And it's sort of half this, I don't know, sort of revisionist history of the web, in my opinion, um, and a sort of uh, screed against big tech and, you know, a lot of the same tech companies that Andreessen Horowitz has funded. Um, and then it's a half, you know, this very hand wavy uh, vision of what blockchains could enable around, you know, paying artists better and, uh, you know, creating communities around interests and uh, fair AI and all these different things like that. Um, but well, I, I found can't it stand to be about that pretty philosophy. disappointing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, continue. What I can't stand about that is that I just when we should be going away from everything being behind paywalls, unless of course it's Paris is writing. Um, to I'd love for it to be outside world, the paywall. <laughs> <laughs> to to a more open world, and and so that the whole uh, uh, blockchain NFT argument is everybody can own something and then they can right. sell it, right? And and it's the beginnings of copyright uh, uh, that that turned everything into a tradable asset. Rather than the joy we had on the internet of doing, th- like you and Wikipedia, doing things for other people, sharing, learning, all that nice kind of crunchy, wonderful stuff. Those guys want to just put a wall around everything. It's also, But it's I- fascinating because Dixon gives some sort of lip service towards the open web. You know, he, he speaks positively of Wikipedia. He, you know, he talks about things like that. And then he speaks about blockchains being sort of this future version of the web so it's it's, there's a lot of right yeah there's a lot of that in the book where it's like i don't get from a to b here like how are you drawing this conclusion Um, i I think there's also some suspicion as like with marcus recent's weird manifesto (laughs) or a a few months ago there's always some suspicion if these guys have all these investments in these technologies that anything they say is 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 conditioned by their their own you know, interest, financial interest in its success, but they're absolutely, yeah. But, uh, what, but I'll play, I'll play Chris Dixon for this episode. What, what about, uh, the vast number of unbanked people, uh, in developing nations for whom, you know, fiat currency isn't, isn't a good choice. Banks aren't phones. available. Well, when I was in, in, in Nigeria, I know there's M-Pesa. But 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 it doesn't doesn't uh, a, a decentralized blockchain uh, ledger system kind of benefit them somehow? How hand waving? My biggest how. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waving Chris's hands. Oh, okay, <laughs> right. that makes sense. Sorry. I mean, I think the biggest problem with that argument is that when you say, okay, here's an unbanked community, we're going to solve problems for them by giving them crypto, that's not the same thing as giving them banking. And what they need is banking. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of the services that you get in crypto are these sort of weird approximations of banking that don't actually have the benefits that you need. So like a good example is, you know, people think about banks, they think about savings accounts, but, you know, it's really important that banks extend credit to people. And when people don't have access to that, crypto is not really giving it to them because in crypto lending is pretty much always over collateralized, which means that you have to have more assets than you're borrowing. And that's not really something that is solving problems for unbanked communities who typically need more assets than they have. Um, 
So, you know, when you say, okay, we're going to give them crypto lending, you know, that's that's basically solving a problem that they, they typically don't have. They don't usually have piles of Bitcoin sitting around that they can take out loans against. Well, um, am I right that there's also a transaction cost that would that has gotten worse? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it depends very much on the on the blockchain, but right. um, there gas, are very high fees. transaction costs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, it depends. But yeah, the, the transaction costs are huge. You know, the security uh, ramifications are huge. Um, you typically have to spend a lot of money to get, you know, into crypto to do whatever it is that you want and then back out of crypto because no one accepts, you know, Bitcoin or Ethereum for a gallon of milk. Um, there's privacy concerns. I mean, I, you know, I could really go on, but, uh, you know, I think when we talk about solving issues for unbanked communities, it's it's a much better idea to look at the actual problems that they have mm -hmm. and the reasons why they're unbanked and then go about addressing those problems um, rather than starting with saying, you know, I've got this blockchain company and I need to figure out what to do with it, which I think is how a lot of the industry has gone about things. That's what about uh, Sam Altman and WorldCoin? I thought that oh was... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> she sighs. Did you have to say yeah. that to the poor person? So for those who don't remember, we talked about it. Uh, Altman... It's the spear. ...is sending the sphere <laughs> the around orb. that you give them your... An orb that you give them your iris reading, and he gives you some world coin, which is a cryptocurrency, <laughs> and then... Mag and it sounds like an old timey curse. You give the orb your eye and you receive money in return. Step three, <laughs> profit. I don't know, but it's, it's some. That's what's so interesting about all of this is somehow all hand wavingly interspersed with universal basic income and unbanked communities, and and we're going to solve the world's problems. And oh, by the way, AI is going to mean infinite wealth, so we don't have to worry. And it's t it's what. Uh, unfortunately, Jeff keeps calling Tess Creel. Uh, mm. We, I we got to get a better acronym. Maybe Molly would, Molly White can create a better acronym than Tess Creel for us. But that's a different crowd, right? The, is that, it, that's is the that AI a different crowd? Doomer crowd. I feel like there's. Well, it's all. I think they're they, all buddies. I feel like they they are, but but it but it kind of advanced. Oh. Um, so the, world the, the coin crypto, isn't part of that. A lot of the crypto that? boys became AI boys, but not all of them. They're they're cousins. Molly, would you disagree here that, that in terms of the the Venn diagram of all these people? <laughs> I think there are people in the Tescreal movements who are crypto bros and who are AI people, um, mm -hmm. but I don't know if they're necessarily completely overlapping There's circles. There's an intersection <laughs> in the Venn diagrams, but they're not a hundred percent. This is world Notice coin. It came off. It came off Molly's tongue with with Tescreal just came off. I know. I noticed. I like that. it. I think it's a great Tess acronym. Creel. Okay. All right. Look at this okay. Too. Tess right. Creel. <laughs> We can get a we can get a choir. For what it. does it stand for? Transhumanism, uh, extropianism, <laughs> uh, singularitarianism, or whatever you say that. Uh, 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 T E S C Cosmism, rationalism, cosmism. effective altruism, and well, long we skip the R, but yeah, uh, 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 rational altruism, altruism, and then and then long termism. <laughs> I like to just making him do that every few months. It's good. Uh, <laughs> the other thing is that Emil Torres uh, and and Tim DeGebru, who came up with the acronym, that is also a a chronology of it. One led to the next, led to the next, led to the next. Yeah, that may be more accurate than saying there's they're the same. It's just that they uh, they evolved from one to the they, they next. evolved. And and yeah. what what Emil, we ought to have on the show, um, is is really really okay. good at is explaining. Uh, how it really is uh, utilitarianism and eugenics. That's what makes this so scary. That's scary. That these people. The the eugenics yeah. word is scary. Very. And it's, yeah. and he, he uh, they, I'm sorry, Emil's they, uh, they are very convincing. And, and Emil was a long-termist. Then saw the light and said, oh my God, what is this crap? And really <laughs> has reported on it and dug into it. Um, and, um, so yeah. What about, it's, it's a, let's actually, let's take a little time out because, uh, I forgot to do that, but if we were to have ads, they'd go here. Um, uh, we're, you're watching this week in Google, uh, Jeff Jarvis, Paris Martino, and our very, very special guest, Molly White, 
uh, of the Web3 is going just great. Her website, mollywhite.net. Um, we were I want I we didn't completely get off of World Coin and the Coin, and then I want to talk about SBF. So there are currently, according to WorldCoin.org, 3.5 million people who have scanned their irises in the orb. Holy schmucks. <laughs> Is your are your eyes in the orb, Leo? No, my eyes are not in the orb. That's actually really surprising to me. If you would have asked me to bet a large <laughs> oh, sum of money, I would have bet that your eyes were. If in the I had orb. been at the most of the orb eyes are over there's some in South America. They this is a very nice map. They they don't where not have a lot they of brought the, how have they brought the is it just one orb? It's because are there multiple that's orbs? where they tested a lot of they have the parties. original software was in sort yeah. of developing countries. Yeah. 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 This is this is fun though. I like doing this. Uh, <laughs> that's you know, that's it's, that's it's another orb. That's where the it's money the went. Orb. By the way, <laughs> that's where the eyeballs are. That's where the eyeballs <laughs> are. There's the orb. Um, it, is it all a scam? Yeah. I mean, yes. I I, I don't think Worldcoin. The thing, the convenient thing about Worldcoin is they haven't actually said what they're trying to do yet, and so it's hard to say. Well, they haven't done it because they haven't actually said what it is that they're doing. Here's what they say um, on their website. <laughs> See if you can figure this out. Worldcoin is designed to become right. the world's largest digital identity and financial network, giving ownership to everyone. Worldcoin aims Finally. to provide universal access to the global economy. No matter your country or background, <laughs> what is that? establishing a place for every human to benefit in the age of AI. Well, I'm in. Finally. Yeah. Universal so access been, to the global economy for everyone. For everyone, no matter your country or following, background. I've been following WorldCoin for a while now, and I think it's really interesting sort of how their messaging has shifted over the last handful of years. Because they started out by saying, oh, we're going to solve these like crypto problems. They were super focused on cryptocurrency and what's called the Sybil problem, which is where it's really hard to know for sure that there's only one unique person in a network because it's so easy to just make 100 crypto wallets and then you can right. have 100 of so-called you in the network. Um, and so that used to be what they talked up all the time when crypto was really big, but then crypto started to be kind of passe and now they're all about AI and they are talking about how, you know, there are going to be all these problems that AI is going to create that WorldCoin will solve by providing this sort of universal basic income adjacent uh, thing to people. And they've very much been able to play on the AI hype to try to market WorldCoin while also, you know, Sam Altman is, you know, playing to both sides here where he is sort of creating the problem with AI and, you know, his various efforts over in open AI world while then selling the solution to this problem, he says, is going to be requiring universal basic income in the form of apparently a cryptocurrency where you get your retina scanned. <laughs> There's a certain synergy to creating the problem than solving the problem. Uh, well, creating that's the what problem, journalists do. Then solving the problem. <laughs> Uh, there is, there has been of late. I just saw an article in Wired about. Uh, actually, it was an interview with Andy Greenberg, who's just written a book about, uh, or actually not just. It's a couple of years ago. Tracers He's always in the dark. Writing a book, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this, but his the, his point is that crypto is not as anonymous as people often think. I mean, it's yeah. You can very clearly track all the transactions. That's kind of the whole point. Yeah. There's yeah, a, I mean, it depends. It's one of those things where depending on who you ask and how you ask it, people will argue that it's both very anonymous and also not anonymous at all. And somehow those two things can both be true at the same time. It's anonymous um, until you want to get your money out. Right, or in to or some in. extent. But, yes. but if, you, if you just let it float around, you're just, it's just a number. It's until you actually try to access. But but if, but that means it's, it's so what? I've got, you know, right. I happen to have eight Bitcoin in a wallet I can't access. Yeah, it's probably pretty anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> I was just having this kind of argument uh, with some Monero people because uh, the... The Monero community, Monero is a privacy coin, and so right. they try to be much more anonymous than Bitcoin even tries to be. Um, and recently, a uh, law enforcement body claimed that they had traced some Monero. Uh, and then all these people in the Monero community were like, no, 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 they didn't trace it. Monero is, you know, the privacy of Monero is completely 
unsullied. <laughs> it's just that he tried to cash out and that oh. was where things went wrong. And it was like, well, as long as you don't try to use the money, yeah. you're perfectly safe. Perfect. Now, meanwhile, again, sol creating the problem and solving the problem, Sam Altman and WorldCoin have this idea for a world ID, which is a universal proof of personhood. All you, go wrong. <laughs> all you need is this human. I would like to try to cross a border with this passport. <laughs> they immediately tackle you and bring you to idiot very jail. very interested <laughs> in what happens. Do you get a lot of arguments, Molly, with uh, these people? I'm surprised that you even waste your energy on that. I mostly don't. <laughs> Um, it's one of those things where like people want to argue the same thing over yeah. and over again yeah. and I don't have boundless en energy for that but every once in a while I give in <laughs> yeah it's hard do you That's... get tired of it what's up are you tired of the topic yet do you see a day when you just say enough <laughs> <laughs> not really I, I find it pretty fascinating and I find the the pattern really fascinating of like hype mm -hmm. in the technology world and playing on you know, lay people's lack of understanding of technology. So I think that is sort of, that helps me have an enduring interest in it, even if some of the specifics are less interesting or changing underneath me. Is that a difference between Web 1 and Web 3? Is that Web 1 took VC's money and Web 3 takes real people's money? <laughs> I think probably Web 2 takes VC's money as well. But true, true. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of it's about the funding model. And, you know, that's something Chris Dixon was sort of talking up in, in his book is how you can use crypto to really bootstrap projects in a way that people used to have to take venture money or, you know, some yep. other source of funding. Um, and he speaks about that like it's a good thing, but he sort of ignores the fact that losses also are impacting individuals in ways that mm. they don't necessarily when it comes from BC. Um, so, you know, he, he was speaking of like the helium project, which he doesn't disclose, but Andreessen Horowitz is an of investor course. in. <laughs> Again, my <laughs> and, problem with all of this. Yeah. Right. Um, and how, you know, helium is uh, created, you know, they claim that they're creating this network through, um, these sort of router type devices that people put in their homes. But he fails to mention that all these people spent all this money on these devices being told that, you know, you'll be able to use them to mine this cryptocurrency token and it'll pay for itself. And then you'll have this thing in the corner of your house that's just generating money for you, which people were very excited about. And then, of course, the token price tanked and people had put all this money into these pieces of hardware that they have no use for at this point. Uh, and it's those people who lost a lot of money, not Andreessen Horowitz. I think Stacy, yeah. our, our, our uh, the predecessor to Paris as host on the show, had a helium router, right, Jeff? And she yes. was at Bainbridge Island, so she had a lot of ship traffic going by. Right. And so they right. would they would attach to her helium router. But But this was all before the currency tanked, so... I wonder if she... I, well, and also the the network that they were trying to bootstrap was for something called LoRaWAN, which yeah. is a low, low energy sort of internet range. of things. Long range, yeah. low, low energy, wild, wired, wide area network. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she was a and LoRaWAN fan. They, but they found, I think the Helium company discovered that there wasn't really that much demand for it. And so despite... <laughs> The company being valued at like over a billion dollars, they were getting like a thousand dollars of fees from people who are actually using the LoRaWAN network. So they had to do this like last minute pivot to, they call it 5G, but it's not actually 5G. It's right. like this really weird sort of scamception type of thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know, anybody who's been in the technology business for any length of time has seen a lot of things like this uh, come and yeah. go. It's not always... Uh, um, malicious or malintent or greed or or a ripoff it sometimes it's just it didn't work uh seemed like a good idea at the time uh you know i think they were using stacy's internet connection so she's not only paying for the hardware but for an internet connection when when she was on the show she w i think she was of the opinion she was making money but i suspect she's not making yeah money. but it was it was a, a little play money it was a small amount of money she was more interested yeah. in the technology uh Oh, the Laura Wan technology. All right, we got some stories, Molly. If you want to stick around, we could, you, we can get your comments on all sorts of things.
Would you, sure. Would you like to join in? Uh, yeah, happy to. From the UK, the phone book. Oh, this is such an old fart story. Jeez. <laughs> I said the phone book is going the way of the fax machine. Of course, this is from the Daily Mail. But it, it is not already. No, yeah, British it, Telecom. Well, they're behind there. British Telecom for 150 years has been delivering a phone book to its customers. This is the original. What are people going to rip <laughs> to show that they're very strong? In this TV is <laughs> this is this is the one that came to uh, people's door this week. This is from Glasgow South. Our, look at this final edition. Hold on to it forever. Our last <laughs> book has landed at your door. 18 million of them will be handed out Aww. all over the UK. But then that's it. So I ask students oftentimes how many of them have used uh, Yellow Pages. And surprise, more than I would have thought. I've used Yellow Pages. Have you? Yeah. yeah for, for actually looking stuff up? Yeah. Oh. I like don't paper remember yellow what pages? it was, but I, yeah, paper yellow pages. I remember having to go through it all the time as wow. a child and teen. Wow. Yeah, they were definitely still a thing when I was a kid. Uh, I, I can remember. I use whitepages.com all the time. Well, that's, now. that was the funniest thing at these poor, there's, there actually is a company called Yellow Pages uh, and they tried to move to the web like, oh yeah, that's what I'll do. I'm looking for the phone number of business. I'm going to go to yellowpages.com and look it up. Well, I hate to say it, but, but when I when I started local sites with Advance back in two thousand um, four five, um, we thought as a company, Yellow Pages is going to be it. We wasted a huge amount of money <laughs> developing Yellow Pages software. Oh my god! And directories and trying to get the directories and the oh my god, because it was a beautiful business, right? You had to be there. If right. The butcher down the street was there, and you're not there. Yeah. You're going to suffer, and you paid so to it was be a in fear it. sell yeah. to all these guys. Yeah. Local businesses, and you could buy a, you could buy a display, you could buy bigger or littler. Remember? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we could, we could sell you a little art. Another of, you know, thing, a, a, a Google has shop. ruined for the world. If it weren't yeah, for see. Google, we'd still have Yellow Pages. R.I.P. Probably, uh, probably AI would even. No, it'll give you. A, it'll hallucinate. Well, it's number. basically I'm writing the paper right now. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm writing about the, the the California Journalism Preservation Act. And it's basically if the Yellow Pages had tried to get back at Google, that's what it would be. It's newspapers trying to get back. Yeah. <laughs> you ruined you ruined our business model. Air Canada thought it'd be a good idea to put a <laughs> chat bot uh, on their website, so you know you could you could ask it about fares, book book stuff already, book stuff and and things like that. Uh, a fella uh, named Jake Moffat sad his grandmother uh, passed uh he wanted to fly to toronto to be there uh, for the funeral he went to air canada's website to book a flight from vancouver uh and he didn't understand how, there are every airline has a bereavement rate uh so he asked the chatbot explain uh, the bereavement rate the chatbot went oh yeah <laughs> so uh <laughs> he said the chatbot said book the flight right now as long as you ask for a refund within 90 days We'll give you the money back. Well, it turns out Air Canada, <laughs> that way they made that up. The chatbot made that up. Air Canada's policy explicitly says you have to, you can only get the refund before the flight's booked, not after. Moffat followed the request for months. He tried to get Air Canada to give him the refund. Uh, he even had a screenshot, smart man, of the chatbot. <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't plan ahead. That's what I was really surprised about yeah, reading yeah. this maybe, story. Maybe he was a little suspicious. I don't know. He he did a screenshot. Because <laughs> Air Canada is a jerk airline. So he couldn't believe that they, they were going to do this. Easy, I'm sure. Yeah. It says <laughs> Air Canada argued that because the chatbot's response elsewhere linked to a page with the actual bereavement travel policy, Moffat should have known bereavement rates could not be requested retroactively. So the at the best Air Canada would do is promise an update to the chatbot. We'll fix that and give him a two hundred dollar coupon. And they blamed the chatbot. They oh, said yeah. it's not our problem. The chatbot. It's the chatbot. They're they're the one who screwed up. Air it's Canada said the chatbot is a separate legal entity that's responsible for its own <laughs> actions. <laughs> the court threw him threw it. a shot. <laughs> it was worth it. Court said no. Uh, 
in fact, uh, that's not true. And you're liable. And Air Canada did, in fact, give him a refund. Um, and that's that. They were forced to by the court. Yeah. yeah. And then they turned. I wonder what would have happened chatbot. if he had convinced like the chatbot to give him a plane or something. Like, would they have made him honor that too? Like that chatbot that was working for the uh, car dealership. Right. right. Um, that essentially kept making deals to <laughs> sell a Tesla for $1 or something. And no give backs, right? Yeah, no give backs. <laughs> I hope everyone screenshotted that and they can bring it to court. Yeah. <laughs> He's, oh, well, precedent. that's the that's the advice. Screenshot everything. If a chatbot tells you, screenshot it. Um, yeah, this is the uh, this is the story. A car dealership that added an AI chatbot to its site. It was a a Chevrolet dealership, and um, <laughs> this is the story from Business <laughs> Insider. Katie Natopoulos writing: A car dealership added an AI chatbot to its site. Then all hell broke loose. <laughs> Is this the one that was writing code for people? Yes. Yes. Yeah. This chatbot <laughs> yes. was wild. Uh, they po they asked for for Python code because it was powered by Chat GPT, so it can write Python code. Uh, somebody bought a 2024 Chevy Tahoe for a dollar. <laughs> uh, by the way, not legally binding. It turns out. Oh. What's interesting here is 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 the debate over responsibility because you have legislation in California uh, being proposed saying that the model must be responsible for everything bad done with it. Then the next question is: Is the application layer is it is it Air Canada making a bad application, or is it the schmuck lawyer who used it for his citations? And it's a really interesting discussion about who is responsible and who is the author. In the lawyer's case, the lawyer was the one who got fined, not Chat GPT. Yes. Because the, the judge said, when I covered it, the known. judge said, the technology's not at fault here. Right. Straight up. Right. Though I would argue that Microsoft was at fault for giving the lawyer the impression that he was going to get credible answers from it as one would a search engine. Have you seen... You know, uh, search engines are never wrong. By the way, you it's were mentioning right. Sam Altman... Right. It, it, am I misreading that? Is he ask? Is he trying to raise seven trillion dollars? Mm -hmm. I think he may have upped it to eight. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, evil he villain joked money. About it. I don't know if he was serious. Uh, he, this is to create AI chips. Yes, trillion with a T. Trillion, trillion. eight trillion. Okay, fine. Eight SoftBank is going for a hundred million to work on chips. Yeah. Well, it's expensive. I, I acknowledge that, but it seems like an awful lot of money. It's the hubris is just incredible. It's was, to power all right, your but was he joking? chat GPT prompts. Was it, was it, orbs. Was <laughs> it orbs, tongue in cheek? Yeah. I don't think so. What I think that, is that? I think he joked about making it eight after people balked at seven, but I think seven was legitimately what he was asking for. Uh, unless the Wall Street Journal is lying... Sam Altman seeks trillions of dollars to reshape the business of chips and AI. Uh, of course, UAE has some money. Seven trillion, though. That must be over 30 years. I mean, what is the what is the defense budget of the United States? It's not that high. <laughs> That's a lot of money, kids. All right. Uh, how about Sora? This is their new OpenAI's new video from text. Now, I have to say. The videos I'm going to show you were generated by Sora without modification, according to the website, but they have not released the model. Still, pretty impressive. This is the, the text prompt. A stylish woman walks down a Tokyo street filmed with warm, glowing neon and animated city signage. She wears a black leather jacket, long red dress, and black boots, uh, and carries a black purse. She wears sunglasses, red lipstick. She walks confidently and casually. The street is damp and reflective. <laughs> creating a mirror effect of the colorful lights many pedestrians walk about. This looks about right, although there is a certain are AI. Are arms too long? Yeah, look at this hand. They are pretty yeah, long. Everybody's that moving at the exact same speed. That hand is weird. Direction. I also, did you guys I see? I think her arm is like was... stretching as she walks. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it, so it's clearly right there now it's AI. There was about a, uh, one of these examples was a uh, stylish, colorful bird pecking about. And someone's like, yeah, this looks good. But if you also look at, um, I think it was like Getty or something, which is one of the sources. Oh, you'll find a, they uh, have 
that's that bird. They're like, there is a photo that is like that bird exactly yeah. on Getty. So I think a, I'm curious once they release more information about this model, how much of this is like existing content right. that they've just kind of animated in some way. Well, notice there is a uh, bug of some kind. I don't know if it's the Getty watermark, but there's something in the lower right hand corner that is changing around. So maybe it is the Getty watermark. Still, this is, or maybe that's Sora. I don't know. I guess it's in all of them. Some of it's, you know, yeah. hallucinatory. There's um, a guy doing something, uh, I think, physically impossible. There's a dog that goes from window to window in a way you just couldn't. Well, and this yeah, guy. Yeah, there's a cat that has like three legs. <laughs> yeah. And you can't, I don't know of any treadmills that go that direction. Well, it could invent. It could. It's create. It's a creation machine. It could. It, could it says weakness. That. Sora sometimes creates physically implausible motion. <laughs> that is a weakness. Nevertheless, Jerry had a good post saying that 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 uh, yeah. This the, these these pups we're looking at all. There's three. There's four. There's oh, five. It oh. changes by the second. Um, oh, what a Gary world! Said that it's it, going to get very solve. world over the next weird over the next ten years. I told oh, you yeah, that. That's it's true. Weird. It's ten, true. Ten years, ten years, ten minutes, ten, ten days. <laughs> it it can't solve for time or space or causality because well, it no. doesn't. So when they're when they're arguing that oh my god, I, I saw the stories. Oh my god, AGI is just three weeks <laughs> away now. I think somebody actually said three months away. It doesn't. It's not a real world model. That's the weakness of this. It has no sense of fact and text. It has no sense of reality here. Archaeologists discover a generic plastic chair in the desert, excavating it floats. It and dusting. Why is it, it hovering? <laughs> it's moving oh, in it a falls. really concerning it's way. It's really yeah. creepy. <laughs> really creepy. But you know what? I want to see a movie made with all these clips. I think there would be some really. Somebody's gonna in Hollywood's gonna do this at some point. Just wild, <laughs> weird. <laughs> this is the world we're we're moving into. I don't need a microdose. I can, uh, yeah. yeah. It's true. Oh, this is haunting. So this, uh, this grandmother with neatly combed gray hair stands behind a colorful birthday cake with numerous candles at a wood dining room table. Expression is one of pure joy and happiness with a happy glow in her eyes. She leans this forward and blows out the This video feels like you're on acid. Yeah, all of it does. <laughs> it's upsetting. Doesn't it all yeah. feel that way? She's got doll eyes. Of course she's yeah, got doll eyes. Yeah, it's just like sweaty. Sweaty? Wait, a sweaty if, grandma? If all of this stuff <laughs> had been positioned as a creativity machine, we'd be wowed, period. The fact that they tried to make it act as if it could do anything real. Well, it is early days. It is. It's amazing. I, I mean, like it's, watching it's the girl on the left bad. try to figure out how to clap. Yes. Yeah, the hands in the background <laughs> are really upsetting. <laughs> They're so creepy. <laughs> They're so creepy. You know, this this is the cake is so short. Everything is looks normal until you kind of. <laughs> well, she look has no closely. breath. She's trying. She's trying to blow out a candle. She blows, but nothing happens to the candle. Yeah. It has no sense of causality. I did like the uh, one of that's a California uh, footage of California yeah, during nice. the gold rush. It looks like drywall. The I'd be I'd be fooled by that. To be honest, maybe that's because I'm an idiot. I don't know, but I. That, you know, you could I say I colorized. The things, it's an impossible shot to I get I think one of the then. scariest things about this see, technology they, got, is, they had sorry, drones back then, didn't they? That's true. Yeah. They had drones back then, Leo. So you're right. But <laughs> only in black and white. <laughs> Go ahead, Molly. Sorry. <laughs> I was just saying, I think one of the scariest things about the technology is not necessarily what it can produce, but the fact that it now introduces so much doubt into any video that you see. You know, I think I've, we've seen that to some extent with... AI generated, you know, still images where now people will see images and they'll have to sort of double take and go, is that AI or is that, you know, actually something that happened in real life? And that's what I really worry about with the video stuff as well Is like now everyone's going to look at a video with that sort of piece of doubt in their mind wondering, you know, is this something I can trust or not? I think that's already happened, right? But I mean, should yeah. we stop it because of that? I mean, that's not a reason to stop it. No, not necessarily, but I, I think that, you know, it's one of those things that we have to just be really cautious now about things that once were generally seen as, you know, a trustworthy source, um, you know, but I mean, I think if people can learn to be cautious about just believing everything they see, that's going to be a good thing, but I have some doubt as to whether or not, you know, average people will actually 
learn that. I feel like we'll have is... to invent new institutions. We'll have to create new institutions. The in the Gutenberg parenthesis, I, I haven't plugged it for a few that's weeks. That's not the solution. In in the Gutenberg parenthesis, I tell the story of the first alleged call for censorship <coughs> by Niccolo Perotti in 1470, and he and he saw a shoddy translation of Pliny. He said to the Pope, "You got to do something." And what he was really asking for was not censorship at all. He was asking, he was anticipating the creation of the institutions of editing and publishing. Oh, and that kind of institution. Come as the need, yeah, as these needs arise, they come. And, and, and right now, those institutions are inadequate to the scale of well, speech. Well, Molly's an today. expert in something more modern, the institution of Wikipedia and the editing. Yes. Policy, which is an example of an institution that yeah. was invented with an opportunity to and a deal problem. with that. I mean, don't yeah. don't don't you all the time, Molly, deal with false uh, information in Wikipedia? Of course. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the chief things, right? Um, here's an interesting article that got a lot of people sent to me uh, from uh, a site called HouseFresh.com. This is a website, like many websites, that specializes in reviews. In this case of uh, air, air purifiers. The article, though, is interesting how Google is killing independent sites like ours. And I would say it it's... It ain't Google. It's not Google. I would say it's companies creating, now with the aid of AI, uh, artificial content. And that's... To follow on with what you're saying, Molly, that's really... We're going to be, we are in the, the midst of getting flooded. We got flooded with spam. We came up with some ways to deal with it, but spam never went away. That was a drip from the faucet compared to the tsunami, uh, the flood of garbage information that is going to start to persist on the internet. Leo, I talked to uh, somebody. Yeah. Go ahead. I talked to somebody who was at one of those companies that, uh, that, that used AI and was known for it. I, I won't say who. And they said, you don't understand, Jeff. We're in a war over reviews, which is triply ridiculous because I would think that a review of all things would be a human opinion. But it's, Apparently not, it's not. this junk. It's this junk. Giselle they Navarro. Just to get the SEO. It's all about SEO. air purifiers. Yep. Yeah. Giselle Navarro and Danny Ashton from HouseFresh.com provide a bunch of examples. They say big media publishers are inundating the web with subpar product recommendations you can't trust. Google hates it too. Google doesn't want this junk. They want to have decent search results. Well, in fact, they don't know what to do. What they talk about is how Google, realizing there was a lot of, you know, kind of phony, we tested 83 air purifiers and here's the best, mm -hmm. set up some standards for this. Like there have to, you have to mention huh. a lab, you have to mention the products, you have to show pictures of the testing and so forth. So the problem is immediately these phony sites. They're, actually, they're not phony sites. They're Better House and Gardens. They're well-known sites. Uh, better uh, just said, okay, fine, and they and they filled it up with that kind of content. And Google said, oh, okay, I guess it's real. Um, it's just like about.com. It's the same exact story. Yes, is that about did wonderful work. It was really good. And then the content farms ruined it for everybody. Same thing with BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed had really fun viral stuff. Then others learned the same trick. There was no barrier to entry. And then they ruined it for everybody, including BuzzFeed, who today had to sell half their business. Um, they mentioned it's, BuzzFeed it's in this article. This. So, yeah. he, so uh, here is uh, the example with Better Homes and Gardens. Uh, Better Homes and Gardens never mentioned conducting tests prior to the Google product review update uh, July of last, of 2022, uh, you can see clearly, and they have the screen captures. I always do the screen captures, kids. On July 6th, there were no mentions of air purifiers being tested. By July 26th, the day before the announcement of the Google update, they say, oh, yeah, we tested 38. <laughs> and then with photos, which all are credited to somebody named Harry Wartok, That's on multiple aunt. sites... It turns out these are all sites run by your favorite Meredith, Jeff, and Meredith dot dash dot dash Meredith. They call him now the owner of uh, what's left of Time Inc. and what's left of Meredith. So dot dash Meredith hired a guy, which is by the way, which is also the successor company to About.com. It goes well, full circle. It goes full circle. Uh, they hired this guy, Harry, to take these pictures. And it appears, look at all the places it appears. Health, people, better homes and gardens, the spruce pets, uh, real simple. These are all basically 
websites pretending they did the testing, but they have the tests are all from the same place with the same people. Wow. Here's real simple. Here's People Magazine. Look at the matching. With <laughs> all credited to Harry War Talk. Well, real simple and people are in the same company. The other thing it's all dot is, dash I'm guessing yes. this is not advertising. This is all affiliate revenue. Yeah. And incidentally, housefresh.com, mm -hmm. same thing. They say, but we actually test. But they say at the very top, it's affiliate. The way we pay for this is affiliate revenue. I um, wonder what's happened to the New York Times um, site to Wirecutter. Wirecutter. Wirecutter, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I you know I think there is a point that there is considerable pressure on these companies, especially since it's private equity companies that have bought up these companies and now need yep. to pay off yep. this huge debt they incurred to buy these companies. But there's pressure to generate income. And they're ruining the web and the internet for all of us. There's a lot of crap. And it's got to get worse. And so... That's what I, you know, people talking about AI was going to ruin Google and, and, and chatbots. I don't think that's the issue. I think that the issue is the web is getting ruined and Google gets blamed for it. Hey, Google searches aren't as good as they used to be. That's because of this junk. So what happens to be able to, um, to change that? I don't know. In 2020, Popular Science was sold to a private equity firm, North Equity LLC. This is also from the House Fresh article. A year later, they introduced a new arm of their business that that runs all the media brands they acquired, and they they stopped printing a magazine. They started putting up websites with phony <laughs> reviews. <laughs> See that same thing, right? Yeah. Uh, now the problem is, and and I think this is legitimate from House Fresh. This is a legitimate complaint. I think they're wrong saying Google's the problem, but it is hurting sites that actually do testing. That are independent sites. They just don't show up. They don't have the Google Foo that Real Simple and People Magazine and Better Homes and Gardens and Popular Science have. So they're not going to show up. People click on those, on those brands. Yeah. And that tells, that's a signal to Google. Oh, it must be okay. They clicked on it. Is but that, is that how Google's... Seen up. So if you search for best air purifier for pet hair, uh, you're going to find all of those sites, but you're not going to find housefresh.com. What do we find? Let's look for it. Let me see. What first comes up? Uh, first is a sponsored thing, but the first organic one is Better Homes and Gardens. There you go. One of the then Real Simple Spruce dot pets, dash Meredith Reddit, dot dash Meredith Reddit. Good. Well, Buzzfeed, that's good. Buzzfeed. Buzzfeed dot dash. You no, know, I, I read the article though. They talk about how Reddit's getting brought into this too because now people are spamming reviews and things right. like yeah. that on Reddit. I've noticed that on Reddit. You really, it's terrible. You can really yeah. tell too. Uh, Certainly. When somebody but goes there's in popular there. popular science in the yeah. list. Yep. It's very sad. It is. It's our web. And, and they're messing it up. Well, but I'm there's business sorry. opportunities here. There's finding new ways to do things. I mean, what is Google's responsibility? Which are? How does Google solve this? Can they? I mean, it's less a Google problem and more media. I mean, Jeff can talk about this much more eloquent, wrote a whole book about this. But, you know, that media have for a long time relied on advertising revenue and that the bottom has not only fallen out of that, but it is like crumbled away. And so all of these companies are searching for something to fill that gap. We should have, uh, you know, Matt Cutts for a long time uh, was at Google. He's been on the show many times in charge of fighting spam, fighting, uh, you know, click farms and things like that. Um, I'm sure there's some, there are people at Google, maybe Danny Sullivan's doing it. I don't know. There's still people at Google who are doing that, but uh, it's got to be hard with a tsunami of crap. Low effort. Very hard. Clickbait. Articles. It's very hard. Yeah. And, and, but I think that's the, um, I, I'm going to do my other thing, my other book. Thank you for the plug there, uh, Paris. In magazine, I talk about. Listen, we gotta get the trifecta. Guys. I got him here. I'll have I'll have galleys of the next one soon. Um, Jeff Jarvis uh, seeks seven trillion dollars in royalties. <laughs> Just seven copies, people. Can you buy seven <laughs> copies? It'll make me look good. Um, uh, when media exploded with mechanization and industrialization in the mid nineteenth century, Harper's was invented to solve this. Harper said, "There's a, there's all this new stuff out there. We gotta find the good stuff for you." And I think that there'll be ways that people will be verified as actual product testers. And there'll be ways that somebody will go out there and do the work to say uh, the new consumer, maybe consumer reports should do this. Consumer reports would say, we test it and we know those who actually do. And we'll certify the certifiers. That'd be an opportunity for them.
Molly, I think this is a business opportunity. you scan your eyeball. Yeah. It's <laughs> true. I think if we scanned our eyeballs, this would all, this would all go away. Uh, Walmart's buying Vizio, the uh, well-known television brand. Uh, the Walmart's probably the number one uh, company selling Vizio TVs. We've recommended them for years. Why is Walmart buying them? For the ad business. Amazing, huh? Of course. $2.3 billion. They don't care about the TVs. Walmart has their own house brand. But... But the the when you buy a Vizio TV, it's cheap, right? Because well, I, I won't buy them anymore because of this. Because they've, they've junked it up. The it hardware. spies on you. It's got a camera in it. It knows what you're watching, when you're watching it. it knows if there's anybody in the room. It uses its oh. microphones to figure out what you're watching. And it's so valuable. Walmart said, "Yeah, that's worth two point three billion dollars to us. We we believe we believe." Vizio's customer-centric operating system provides great viewing experiences <laughs> at attractive price points, said Seth Dallaire, executive vice president and chief revenue officer of Walmart. We also believe it enables a profitable advertising business that is rapidly scaling. <laughs> at least they admit it, right? In-house advertising. I'm surprised I don't hear that as a as a... Genre. <laughs> it can offer, once we acquire Vizio, we'll be able to offer, quote, innovative television and in home entertainment and media experiences. Media experience. <laughs> it's going to be innovative when you see those ads popping up on your screen. You're just trying to watch TV, man. Um, I just, it's it's like they're saying the quiet part out loud. I don't, it, they're not even hiding it. They are. I, I bought one for my father. And then I returned it because I couldn't get it to. It was, it was it was insisted on giving me all its junk. Even like I, for years, have been Samsung trying phone. to buy a new TV because I have I don't know some crap TV that a roommate roommate left in an apartment <laughs> once. But I don't know. I'm like I will shell out good money for a TV, but I don't want it to have spyware. I don't really want it to be internet connected, and there aren't really any options for that. <laughs> you want a computer monitor then, Paris? I know. No, that but sucks. They won't the, sell, the, the you know, they won't, but they they won't sell, sell me like TVs. a 55-inch computer monitor. Well, they monitor. do at thousands of dollars, yeah, much more expensive than I a TV. Know, that's crazy. I guess that Why don't you want, I do want to connect it because I want to stream things, Paris. Because I can connect no, no. something to it, it to stream. Oh, this, the TV yes. itself does not need to stream. Do not connect My the TV Roku the internet. and Amazon or uh, Apple right. TV can stream. Let Roku spy on you. You don't need Vizio and Roku spying on you. Listen, I'm going to choose one to three companies to spy on me for any viewing activity <laughs> and no more. They're, 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 I mean, really, if you don't, most TVs, you don't have to connect them. They'll complain. But every once in a while you connect them if you want to update firmware or whatever. They'll complain, but you don't have to connect them. And don't. just as you say, let the Apple TV, and this is where... Chromecast. I hope Apple doesn't, Roku. doesn't go down this path too far. They already have started putting advertising on their stores and so forth. But there's a big app opportunity for them to say, look, we'll be the place you can stream this stuff from safely without... They try to pretend they're doing that, but... I. You know, my Apple TV, I, I don't want to see any Major League Soccer, but there's constant ads for Major League Soccer because they own it. So, I, I don't know. It's what Philip K. Dick wrote about many years ago, ads, ads on every surface of everywhere. Molly, do you have a TV? I do. Okay. Not exactly good for productivity. Do you watch when the TV? When is the last time you watched yes, exactly. a TV on a TV? <laughs> I will, I'd like that to pose this very panel to the group, question. to the, to the chat. <laughs> yeah. and I turn on I my like TV like once a month. If that. <laughs> Same. Yeah, that's how you get productive. Meanwhile, I'm watching TV five, six hours every single night. YouTube is now, YouTube TV is now the uh, number one streamer. In case you had any uh, doubts about that. Speaking, speaking of, of TVs and how the business operates now. 12 months straight, according to Nielsen. Um, that's beating, uh, what, Netflix? Everybody. everybody. Um, yep. Not YouTube TV, YouTube. So yeah. that's the thing you do. You know, you're watching, uh, and I think it's because of you young people. It's all your fault. You kids. We used you're to ruining, have. You're we, ruining our networks. We, we used, used to just have three places. We used we could to have Petticoat food. Junction we and happy. my mother the car. But no, you had to watch Marquez Brownlee and 
Mr. Beast. <laughs> Twit.tv. <laughs> Twit.tv. By the way, congratulations to Marquez Brownlee because in the YouTube official blog celebrating, crowing that they are the number one streamer, they have a big ass picture of Marquez Brownlee. <laughs> <laughs> Next to a cyber Next truck. To a cyber truck. Uh, wow. Anyway, um, nice work if you can get it. Congratulations, Marquez. So, uh, but that doesn't surprise me. We saw this coming. I mean, I, you know, I, when Henry, 10 years ago, was in high school and his and his buddies came over. They didn't watch TV. They had YouTube running all, you know, all in the background, auto playing in the background all the time. And that's and why now he's Salt a Tank makes yeah. how much from yeah, you his know, YouTube kidding. videos. You're right. My son, you don't Molly, know Molly, important context is that uh, Leo's son is a TikTok influencer, he's, food influencer called Salt Hank. He's much bigger than I, than I ever was. Two and a half million dollars. Famously <laughs> received TikTok. tens of thousands of dollars for promoting a Cheetos brand duster. <laughs> um, Paris, Paris, the guy who was impressed with Salt Hank is not the same guy who thought I was a 90-year-old. No, two from, different guys. Two different guys, uh, okay. That guy, uh, the guy who thought, this is a uh, bit that started before we started recording the show, which is a different guy I was seeing. I sent a photo of the podcast the other week when we had Micah on, and he goes, oh, Leo Laporte, I loved him. And then sees the photo of Jeff and is like, and is that Noam Chomsky? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, not quite. But, you know, different guy than the guy who didn't know either of you but knew Salt Hank. <laughs> Sounds okay, like a Google. winning streak, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I will say. Chonsky? <laughs> now, it's not bad to be compared to Noam Chomsky, honestly. It's true. He's grumpy as hell. He's 95 years old. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> he looks just like I... you, uh, Jeff. I don't know what you're. Jeez. <laughs> Look at him. There he is on TV. <laughs> <laughs> he looks barely alive. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah, looks, you look you looks like just that. like you. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so... Paris. Paris. I'm sorry. Listen. Dump this guy, please. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, that depresses me um, so much more. Than I'll use the imagine. Wikipedia uh, picture because you look, that's a little bit better. He doesn't look quite so. But that's from 40 years ago. Yeah, it's pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> Seven years 2017. That's, that's not, not too that bad. old. Yeah. Eh, not too bad. <laughs> oh, Jeff, you, you're a young spry I spring really, chicken. Yeah, I really like this. Here's Morgan interview with Noam Chomsky. This was from uh, last year. <laughs> Yeah. It looks like Jumanji. He's even older now. <laughs> he looks like someone put one of those AI age filters on that photo of Jack Dorsey. <laughs> so for those who don't know, Noam Chomsky, brilliant linguist, semiotician, yes. uh, early AI yeah, pioneer. Yeah, brilliant, Jeff. <laughs> and grumpy. Brilliant. Even grumpy. And grumpy. These days. And uh, the father of monolinguistics. And a, a a good old lefty, like from the from the old days, the old times. <clears throat> All right, I got a couple of fun things, and then we're going to wrap it up because uh, we've gone on for a whole hour and a half, and I feel like that's just what you don't like us anymore. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I don't. Boring? I don't want Molly to think that this show goes on and on. But and then you're not being honest. <laughs> but it does. <laughs> but it does. <laughs> it regularly goes on. And on. I was prepared for three hours. Were so you? you okay. Oh, see? Yes. Correct. Oh, thank you, Benito. Case. Benito is uh, doing his job. Usually we try <laughs> to tell guests not, don't tell them that, please, because they'll never. Uh, this was a great page I found. I, I was going to make it a Leo's pick, but I'll show it to you now. It's called, it's a page of untranslatable words that are in and one, one of language. the words on here is, in fact, throws me off Deutsch. It's doch. It's down there on the list. Doch. And if you, there it is. It means, uh, no, you are wrong, and I am right in one word. Oh, what a great word. Oh, that's really good. Doch. Say, doch. say it for me, Jeff, because Jeff speaks sort doch. of. Doch. Sort of. Doch. So you say something, and then you say doch, and it reverses what you just said. There's a lot of, um, oh, it's like sarcasm. No, no. That's the Germans are not very good at sarcasm. Um, it's, it's what passes it's for sarcasm weird German. in Germany. Yeah. There's a lot of German on this. There's some Hebrew. I don't. I don't know. It's. Uh, I don't know. 
Uh, here's another German one. To paint the devil on the wall. Hi, so the I, Teufel I on the Wand malen. Yeah. I was looking through this yesterday. I was looking yeah. at the, the Filipino words, and there's, it's pretty good like for the Filipino words. Uh, I think it's it uh, user contributed. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, here's one uh, frequently used in Portugal by young people. Sexto. It has Fridayed. <laughs> <laughs> it has Fridayed. 0815, something that very low quality. That's German. German, it's Deutsch, yeah. Verumlin. 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 No, Verumlin. 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 To fail at something, Verumlin. to screw something up, to lose something, or screw someone over. And what does I it like mean? It's little, the little note underneath that says, on occasion by middle aged folks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no well, could gnome. never. It's good to it's good to know. It's good to know. Uh, <laughs> okay, wait, no, so. scroll back up a little bit. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. This one says expression used on occasion by mostly people who have been politically interested in the sixties, <laughs> which is just such a specific description. It's so niche. <laughs> it's a. Uh, it's publicum var fuller jubel perser. Jubel perser. The audience was full of cheering Persians. Cheering Persians. A claqueur, a person who has and been paid reason, to applaud or cheer for someone. Yeah, you've heard of clacks, right? Where they would bring in phony uh, audience members to applaud. Actually, no. You never heard the word clack? I've never heard clack. Ah, no. well, it's a useful word. It happens all the time. It happens at Apple events, the front five rows, always filled with employees who will leap to Crisis their Clackers. They're clacks. They said clackers. But claqueur, or is the French claqueur, um, but the funny thing is this appeared in 1967 when the Shah of Iran visited Berlin and had intelligence agents cheer at the road and beat up protesters. I kind of remember that, actually. So, he, yeah. yeah. Anyway, Stucca. No, let's not do that one. Uh, <laughs> not Here's one from the UK. They're, they're amazing. Not as green as cabbage looking. That that was a really good accent, Leo. Do you want to do that again? <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> the record? No. You want to retake, Leo? <laughs> not as green as a cabbage looking. Hey, Mary Poppins, not as green as cabbage looking. Not to be naive. It somehow as... got worse every time. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> We're like bouncing around varieties of the accents. Fake English accents. Uh, Alta. Uh, older, used by young people. Means. Yeah, young people use this. Old, old one, yeah. Yeah, Alta. Oh, it's like dude. Okay. Anyway, this is, I thought it was oh, kind of like That's like boomer. Every language has words, often slang, that don't mean anything in other languages. Here's one for me. This is uh, used frequently in Sweden by everybody. He <laughs> does. <laughs> to not have the energy or will to do something. <laughs> that's me. You I'll end the show now. <laughs> yeah. don't have the energy or the will to continue. Thank you very much. We're going to pause for a moment. You're watching This Week in Google, our special guest, Molly White. So nice to have Molly White on. Uh, MollyWhite.net is her website, and uh, you should absolutely subscribe. Uh, you can find the link there, actually, to her uh, news. Is it a free newsletter? Yes, it oh. is. No paywalls. Oh, citation needed. Well, you should start <laughs> charging for that. Well, people can pay for it if they want to. <laughs> oh, good. But That's it's a all. sort of pay-as-you-want type all of that's model. That's necessary. Oh, this is good. She uh, she conflates effective altruism with effective accelerationism into effective obfuscation. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Brilliant. I do want to ask her about uh, SBF in just a bit, but we shall continue in a moment. Jeff Jarvis also here. And uh, the wonderful Paris Martineau on Twig. We continue on with our guest, Molly White. Uh, did you follow, I imagine you did with interest, the rise and fall of Samuel Bankman Freed? I did with strong interest. <laughs> yeah. Is he a perfect example of uh, a crypto bro and the crypto culture, or is he just a plain old grifter who found a great grift? I, I would say the two are not necessarily mutually exclusive, um, but I think, yeah, I think he's very emblematic of the last couple of years in the crypto world where, you know, people were trusting a lot of these sort of larger than life personalities with a lot of money and investing in, you know, people like Sam Bankman-Fried 
and then discovering that it was sort of all a house of cards. And, you know, once someone pulled out the bottom card, things started to go really badly. So, you know, there've been, Sam McMahon Fried is certainly the most high profile example, um, but, you know, he's one in a long line of people who are facing investigations or charges for activity over the past couple of years. Um, so I think it's quite emblematic of the space. Is he, I, I wonder though, is he a scapegoat or, uh, I mean, he clearly <laughs> was a criminal, but it seems like he wasn't doing much different from a lot of people or was he? <laughs> well, I mean, a crime is still a crime, even if a lot so. of people are committing yeah. it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I live in but, the um, of Trump yeah. and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, everybody! Yeah, doing I it. Leo it's... speaking to you. He doesn't believe any tech boys can commit crimes. No, SPF was clearly. I mean, they were taking money from uh, yeah. their own, f f from a fund from people and investing it without their permission, right? Yeah, they were taking customer money that was supposed to just be held as if it was in an account on their behalf, and they were using it for all kinds of things. I mean, investments, but real estate and all kinds of things Houses like that. for his um, dad and mom and yeah. Yeah. But I think it, I think it's really telling that I think a lot of people in the crypto world have sort of just forgotten that like <laughs> you can commit crimes that, that things are illegal. Right. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. you're right that the activities that he was engaging in were really common in the crypto world uh, and, and continue to be really common in the crypto world. But there's just been so little enforcement that I think people believe they could sort of do whatever they wanted and get away with it. Um, and I mean, a lot of them have. Well, that's it. Isn't that what happens? You kind of, cause I, I'm, I don't know, but I don't think SBF was kind of going, mm, let me see how I can rip these people off. I think he pr probably I'm guessing was genuinely thinking, well, I, this is what you do. Right, I've got this fund of cash. Or the desperation that comes. I saw it with Robert Maxwell, the rubber baron of of uh, the Daily News and the Daily Mail. Once they, things start going south, they think, well, I'll just borrow some from this. Right. right. And it'll all come back. I know this is going to come back. And they're their own personal Ponzi scheme then. Yeah, and to hear Sam Bankman fried tell it, I mean, he says that he basically viewed the Alameda Research account, which is... Um, or the the FTX account as like an infinite amount of money that he could just dip into. And so it was never going to be a problem. They could always pay it back. And then, of course, it turned out that they couldn't. Um, but he would, you know, at least in his telling, he was so disconnected from the reality of the financial situation of the company that he didn't really realize that he was spending customer money. Um, whether or not you believe that is a different question. I personally don't. You don't put a lot of it. stock okay. into it. No, it's a no, very I don't, convenient I don't fiction believe story. Yeah. Although I think it it's kind of yeah. credible that, you know, uh, a lot of these guys think, well, crypto is just going up, up, up. So whatever I borrow, I'm going to make people money. It's the same kind right. of uh, foolish thought of, you know, give me a hundred thousand dollars. I want to go down and I'm going to win on the roulette table and double, double the money and I'll get all my money back. If you just give me a little more. Every gambler does, you know, every uh, gambling addict does that. Well, just give me a little more and I can make it all back. By the way, Jeff, right. the movie is out. Uh, good news. Uh, Jarvis and Chomsky, twins. <laughs> <laughs> only, only their mother. Only their mother can, can tell them apart. Tell them apart. <laughs> Thank you, Joe Esposito. Oh, Joe Esposito. At it, <laughs> at it again. I don't know. What did I ever do to you, Joe? What <laughs> I don't know. Did I ever do? We gotta give. Uh, we've got to give Molly uh, access to the uh, Discord because there's, oh, yeah. there's so much wild stuff goes on in there. Yeah, I don't. I, did you Did you watch the trial? Did you go to the trial? Did you Did you see it? See, I don't have any direct experience of looking in his eyes and hearing him tell tell us <laughs> that whether that was him lying or or believing it. He could be a he yeah, could be so, yet another victim of the crypto craze. <laughs> I don't think he was. Oh. Um, I, I did go to the trial actually. I, I hadn't originally planned to, but when I learned that he was going to testify, I decided to oh, fly down. Um, fantastic! And I was like, I got to see it. <laughs> oh, tell us about uh, it. Tell us about it. Must have been a, yeah, a it circus. Was, it, it was a circus. It was, I mean, the line out the door at the courthouse was incredible because only the first like 21 people get into the courtroom and there's no press passes or anything. So it's just whoever gets there first. And so people would line up at like one in the morning the night before wow. outside the courthouse to go see, to sit in the courtroom. But 
everyone else got put into these like overflow rooms where you could still see it on the TV and stuff like that. So it wasn't like you didn't get in at all. Um, you didn't get into yeah, the it was courtroom a, in itself. You were watched in an overflow or. Yeah. So yeah. they had these overflow rooms right. where people could sit and see it on the TV. Fascinating. Um, Cause they don't, they don't televise federal court trials right. or anything like that. Right. Um, but yeah, it was, it was quite a experience, uh, just watching him try to explain what had happened to a jury in a convincing way. Um, I think people are pretty unanimously agreed that he probably was doing it against the advice of his lawyers because it didn't go very well. And I don't think anyone really expected it to. Um, is it your feeling he knew what he was doing when he took the money from FTX to put it in Alameda research? Yeah, I think so. He knew it was illegal. I mean, he knew he was taking investor money and using it. In yeah, ways I mean, he was. There were so many cases where he was clearly aware that things were right. going wrong. Where he was the telling money was people, gone. "Don't talk about it." You know, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Delete your messages and right. things like that. And so, yeah, I, I really don't think it's it's true that he just didn't realize and he, you know, oops, made a little oops. mistake and <laughs> eight billion dollars is gone. <laughs> Uh, as I understand, because of his investment, uh, they may get it all back. Yeah, because of the Anthropic investment, which yep. they, they had invested in this AI company called Anthropic. And uh, so, yeah, I think there is the possibility that um, people will get at least a substantial amount of their money back, if not a full recovery. Although the bankruptcy has been unbelievably expensive uh, to this point, just the amount that the lawyers are charging yeah. and the amount of time has been just incredible to watch. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think out of the crypto bankruptcies, the FTX creditors are looking uh, a little bit more promising as far as recovery compared to some of the others. And, and the Anthropic investment definitely has a part to play in that so anthropic <clears throat> there's a little google uh, tie in here because these were people working at google on ai who were very concerned about safety and didn't feel that google was paying enough attention to safety and so they they kind of split off but, uh, but in that in that test real way though i was going to say they're the effective yeah. altruists yeah, yeah they're, they're, which they're, sam bankman fried was as well isn't that ironic so yeah oh i'm not i'm not uh, in fact my uh, my insider friend in AI said, "Oh, those guys are jerks." <laughs> oh, of course, your insider friend Sam Altman. He said, "Okay, they were okay, so Paris, worried about your say they did one company, so you you keep probing Listen, and find I'm out." I'm gonna who keep, was. you know, I got I got a list of notes going here, and we're eventually gonna go yeah. through every he, AI. He was, list. Do you have the Do you have the post-its on the wall and the and the red lines between mm -hmm, them? Yep, it's pretty Leo? hard to keep them contained yeah. on the side that can't be captured by my camera. Yeah, he was but apparently uh, inside at Google when this all happened. And he said, Anthropic will never be as good as Bar, <laughs> as Gemini, or as, uh, say, there's a clue. A Go Google ahead, employee. write them down. Go ahead. <laughs> Professor Plum in the library. Uh, and he also said uh, that really open AI is going to be better because they're not as worried about safety. And the Anthropics, Claude, which by the way, we use Claude all the time here uh, for show notes and all sorts of stuff. We like Claude, but it's much more safe. He said, anyway, so not as good. They have raised $450 million from uh, since uh, since last May from Google and Salesforce. No, I'm sorry, that was in May. In August, $100 million from two Asian telecoms. Amazon gave them $4 billion, $2 billion more from Google. This month, Menlo Ventures gave Anthropic $750 million. They have, in the last year, Anthropic has raised $7.3 billion dollars in five funding deals now see web 3 is going just great <laughs> Yep, it's good work if you can get it <laughs> um it just show i mean there is definitely a gold rush mentality with ai everybody would like to hop on the ai train and i guess uh can you still put money into open ai probably not microsoft's sewn that all up so you got to find somebody else well, it's weird. The uh, somehow the world coin price has started to become a weird, like synthetic version of an open AI stock where it follows uh, because of Sam Altman. The, ah, yeah, it's very bizarre to <laughs> to watch. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So it all leads back to world coin. There is an irony though that SBF's investors may in fact get their money back, even though SBF kind of stole it. <laughs> Because the things he invested in are doing so well. 
Well, one specific thing. One. Yeah. Okay, one. Well, yeah. You know, you only but have to have one hit, right? And, right. and if if AI turns out to be the next um, site that Molly starts, then the value may be uh, short lived. Who knows? <laughs> I could kill it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Credit to the information. They were the ones who figured out that Anthropic got the money for Menlo uh, Ventures, by the way. Yep. Um, yeah, in fact, great coverage. I learn everything about this stuff from from uh, the information. It's really We have really good. such a fantastic yeah. team on, yeah. uh, on OpenAI and its associates. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sam Bankman Free put 800, I'm sorry, 580 million into Anthropic in 2022. And now because OPM, but well, yeah, other but people's it's, money. Yeah, somebody's money. Old people's money is that what OPM is? No, other people's other. money. <laughs> it was all gnomes' money. How dare they take it away from gnome? But Jeff finally found somebody FGX older guy. than him. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh, actually, uh, Anthropics valued at uh, what is it? Fifteen billion. So his little investment there oh, with OPM, old people's money, <laughs> might, <laughs> might, might pay off. Uh, that's interesting. I didn't know that, Molly. That's very interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Boy, if you've got red thread going here, you might want to tie another thing. Listen, across. I've always got red thread yeah. going. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> let's move back to Washington, D.C., where things don't move quite so fast. However, the Senate now has more than 60 votes for COSA, oh. Kids Online Safety <laughs> Act. So there is a path oh. to passage. Well, it's got kids and safety in the name, so it's got to be you good. Know, what could be wrong? If Marsha <laughs> Blackburn the children. and Dick Blumenthal love it, well, what could possibly be wrong? Fortunately, the House is so <laughs> fractured, divisive, and ineffective. They're, they don't even have a, well, a, a bill. Well, in, in this case, it's they a might. way to get trans people, yeah. so... The house yep. could come behind it. Yep. Yeah, because that's really going to be the impact of it. We had a great conversation uh, about COSA uh, over the weekend. Um, and uh, one of the people on the show, Sershana Weissman, who works for a right-leaning think tank in D.C. called R Street, has written a very good, I thought, piece at rstreet.org about COSA and why it's such a terrible idea. Um, and that's one of them is that it will really be... Uh, bad for LGBTQ kids because yeah. they won't be able to get is the it, information. Our, isn't our street a little more libertarian than right leaning? I think our friend uh, Shoshana is there. Yeah, libertarian. I don't know. That's in the old days. I would days, describe libertarian as right leaning. In the old days, well, see, that's the thing. In the old well, days, it was conservative, but now it was like yeah. crypto Republican. But now <laughs> it seems no. almost lefty. Well, <laughs> it's crypto Republican. <laughs> it's yeah. crypto Republican, but it's lefty now because. Well, we've far, fallen so far on the other side. Uh, COSA okay. violates the First Amendment rights of children and adults because in order to do age verification, which COSA mandates, you have to ask everybody, not just the kids. Yeah, you want to care about privacy, all you freaks out there on the Internet? Then COSA is bad for you. Shoshana's main point was it's unconstitutional. Uh, and I think I asked, I said, well, then why would members of Congress attempt to pass a law that's obviously blatantly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she laughs too. Pastimes. She laughs yeah. too. I don't. What's so funny about that? It seems like if you're a a lawmaker, you shouldn't attempt to pass unconstitutional laws. As long as you get the votes and the contributions, then who cares what happens later? It's true. So it's really theater. They don't expect as the law as to Tom Lehrer said of Werner von Braun. I send the rockets up. It's not my business where they come back. <laughs> yeah, it's theater. Have you ever seen a congressional hearing it's on theater? Tech, oh my God, is it theater? It's kabuki theater. <sighs> what was I just was reading something? The news, probably. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Who am I? What am I doing here? <laughs> Um, Leo, you've suffered a, a big fall. It's okay. <laughs> You're on a podcast I can raise my right hands. now. <laughs> um, I think we can take a break and come back with our picks of the week is what I think. Did I do the change oh. log? Wait a minute. I didn't. No, you didn't do the AI corner either. Well, we kind of basically... Do we want to take a look at the change log right now, Leo? This whole show has been the AI corner. Is there yeah, something yeah, look at the change log, Leo. Yeah, take a look at the change log. 
the change log. <laughs> you got so much to do in there. Is there anything in it? Uh, well, there is one big story in the change log. I know you've all been waiting for this. Google has changed the size of its sign-in page. Wait, wait, wait. You can't be telling me about something that's changed until we've heard a certain... Play the, ch play the tone. The Google change log. <laughs> From The Verge. Come on, guys. How am I keeping this on thank the rails you, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Richard Lawler. Tradition. Writing. Tradition. Meet the new Google sign-in page. There you have it. This is this is where this is what the change log has come to. <laughs> That's it. It rolls out today. Get excited, everybody. Actually, I'm pissed off. I don't like this because I already being bombarded every time I go to a site with sign in with Google, sign in with Google, sign in with Google. Now it's gonna be even bigger. No, I don't like that. Get off my front porch, kids. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Joe, for the <laughs> Leo. I just fell off <laughs> my seat and I can't quite figure out what's going on. Image. Uh, all right. There's still other stuff from the change log. It's actually not my change log. It's Scooter X's change log. Scooter X, yeah. That's true. The change log presented by Scooter X. Get ready. Uh, in Europe, they are about to raise, really raise, the cost of your Nest Aware subscription, which makes me worry that they're going to do the same in the U.S. as well. In some cases, as much as doubling the cost of uh, the subscription for your Hello Doorbell or your Nest Hub. Mm -hmm. This is a, you know, Amazon said we lose a lot of money on these uh, on these Amazon Echoes. I imagine Google's in the same same boat. So maybe they're trying to make a little uh, little extra dough before they fold it all. In fact, maybe the folding is coming sooner than not. Inventory of the Nest Hub, the Nest Midi, and the audio uh, Nest Audio little puck is uh, is running low. Oh really? Mm. 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 Oh, next on the chopping this block. This is from nine to five Google. Maybe they just stop making them. What do you think? It's true, also uh, not just on uh, Google's own store, but on other retailers. What's Google going to be left with? Well, and I thought that they were going to take uh, that. The, 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 maybe the hope, the best hope, last best hope for Google's uh, assistant was uh, adding Gemini, their their LLM. But maybe they don't plan to do that. Um, is there Google anything else? Out, Scooter X? Change log. <laughs> Google put out a uh, it's 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 open source version of Gemini called Gemma. Oh, it's so cute. Line sixty eight. So cute. That's news. Nice. Waze is rolling out alerts for speed bumps. <laughs> wow! Thank God. <laughs> You know what I hate? I hate when some schmuck in New Jersey puts up pothole ahead. Well, no shirt. It's New Jersey. That's New Jersey culture. Oh, but I God. do have to think that this Waze update is for people like us, Jeff. Waze starts rolling an alert for speed bumps and sharp turns. Watch out. You don't want to take a tumble. You don't want to take a tumble. There's a sharp turn ahead. Turn the wheel like this, got to move it every little hand like an old person. Actually, my car does that. My car will actually say uneven surface ahead. Uh, I don't How know. How does it know? I, well, it's probably getting it from Google, probably, right? And uh, this is actually kind of bad news for uh, not just uh, Google, but Apple and maybe some other people as well. The FDA stands against using smartwatches to monitor blood glucose levels. There has been a race to get blood glucose, non-invasive blood glucose measuring Why is the FDA into watches. Is not, not accurate? Uh, wearable devices that measure blood glucose levels without piercing the skin can result in inaccurate measurements. FDA emphasizes there are currently no devices capable, capable of doing that without pe yeah. breaking the skin. Well, we know that. Mm. But uh, this is on the FDA's website. But if you adjust your insulin wrongly. Yeah, you could kill it. yourself or put yourself in a coma or all sorts of things, yeah. Um, so the FDA does have authorized, obviously, continuous blood glucose monitors. I've used them. 
uh, but nothing yet in the watch. They say just don't. I think this is for now. You know, obviously Apple or Google would try to get FDA approval before they sell something like this. But for now, do not buy or use smart watches or smart rings that claim to measure blood glucose levels. Hmm. And you know, it is. You know, maybe it's something that they can't can't be done. They they tried. Remember, Google had the contact lens, the Verily uh, moon shot that would measure your blood glucose levels. They discontinued it, I think, probably because it wasn't yep. working. That's the Google change log. I got nothing. Thank you very much. Scooter X is Google change log. I don't know what we'd do without you, Scooter. <laughs> um, the, all right. Look, there is a bunch of stuff that you guys have put in here. So I, Gemma, you, you, we mentioned that. Do you want to go any farther just, just with that? It, people, no. I don't know. Yeah. No. No. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting that Google's trying open source too. So you now have. Um, they have to because Facebook's doing yeah, it with Llama. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's pretty funny that uh, the did you guys our big AI boys here? Did you guys experience the Chat GPT hallucination? I period didn't. I mustn't yesterday? have used it last night at the right times because it. Yeah, apparently got mm -hmm. very sleepy and started. Got really wonky. I mean, have we, all of those days. Did you see some examples? Because <laughs> I'd love to see what it looked like. Uh, seventy-eight. Hmm. Rat. Oh, Rat? No, sorry. That, that, that's, that's a different, different one, actually. That's sorry. One. I just saw gibberish. That's a, a very a different oh, AI look. hallucination. This that's is from Mid Journey. Funny. Don't look. Close your eyes, children. Close your eyes if you're a child. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is Mid Journey imagery of a rat member that somehow got into a well known peer reviewed. Science science journal. Yes. I think it's worth yes. noting that the <laughs> member in question is larger than the rat. It's getting, larger than the rat, it's so going off know the how page. Large it, is. it goes to the sky. <laughs> it's a happy rat, I should add. Even yeah, though it's it looks cut curious. In half. Um, this this then after this this furor, it did get withdrawn. <laughs> I hope so. But I it's hope not so, the yeah. member, but the paper. <laughs> the member's still at large. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, we don't do we have any chat GPT hallucination uh, examples from last night? Oh, well, do they know? Do they say happen. why it happened? I do think it's really interesting that like this must mean that apparently somewhere there's like a knob they can turn <laughs> that like yeah. somehow hallucinations got you know cranked up to eleven. <laughs> Here is an Put example. The lithium in the machine. Here's an example <laughs> from or a couple of examples from Sean McGuire on uh, X. Uh. <laughs> of note, Kata type requires an Bita Lampara Paja Punto to unclear off, fired of the photo setting waves, nesting product muy deeply, as though a nana under an admin color somberet. And he responds, are you having a stroke? Some of what you're saying makes no sense or aren't let proper me, words. Let me encyclopedia me. See, there's more wonderenda to your articulations hungry for. Smiley face emoji. It's like someone emoji, trying to pretend emoji. they're speaking English. And then so ChatGPT says, whoops, I really apologize if my last response came through as un unclear or se siente like it drifted into some nonsensical wording. Sometimes in the creative process of keeping the intertwined Spanglish vibrant, the cogs, and la tecla might get a bit whimsical. <laughs> Muchas gracias for your understanding. E, I'll ensure we're being as crystal clear como lo from now on. So, it, wow. Well, a quote from below. Would it glad your clicklies to grape turn tooth over a mind ocean jello type? Or submarine else, que quinceras, que oh dive in tow? What? <laughs> oh, my God. That's incredible. Somebody Actually, it is run by human beings. They're in Mexico City. They had too much tequila. <laughs> and then here's one. Uh, each This is something about music. Waltz for Debbie and the legendary Sunday at the Village Vanguard. Enjoy the stages of ether in music time and the response with extra gland, gland, grand closes. And then it just types happy listening over and over and over and over again. Enjoy the content at home <laughs> or on big watches. <laughs> Always in the perspective with the Taylor nose and living the, and then, oh, oh. Lord. 
This is one that just says, it's you. It's here. It is, and it can be, and it will be, and it is, and it must be. It is, and it shall be, and it is, and it could be. <laughs> I Maybe think they've achieved that again artificial again. general intelligence. And this is AGI. Existential crisis. It says, oh, yes. I don't want to yeah. be here. This is I, test creole. What we don't know, and I have to say this, is we don't know what the prompt was, and it could easily. Open AI, open AI acknowledged this issue, and it stat its status dashboard at the time first said it was quote investigating reports of unexpected responses from chat gpt on tuesday it later updated to say that the issue has been identified and was being monitored and here's one <laughs> on wednesday had updates that all systems were again running normally here's one with the actual prompt something i might ask myself what are the different types of gel nail like builder gel etc Absolutely. The gel nail world is muy extenso. He offers a lot of variety. Let's dive into some <laughs> de los different types of gel you'll encounter. Uh, it's, it, <laughs> and then it goes this, into gel like, like manicure nails. Yeah, like manicure nails. And I think it's just mixing English with Spanish on this one. So maybe that's just a little, you know, a little hitch and it's get along. These things happen. Uh, apparently what? even happened in chat GPT Enterprise. Here's another... Uh, post from uh, Promise Bender on Twitter, Chat GPT Enterprise <laughs> suggested agenda <laughs> for the meeting, coinage of the meeting, and docket conflux. Six minutes, lilt off together and vindicate the things to be seen as centermost for the meet. Number two, develop goosing and walk mark rank. <laughs> <laughs> Ghost line the flux and trick from the first telling till now, being thankful for the outfetch of needlework on the eaves for the novial pith. Number three. I would listen to a podcast that is just Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hitches and hefts reproof. Ether the <laughs> Ethel the books, any concrete scaries, and the sigh of hitches with a primal house on the list for the layoff and gavel vaulting. Number four, for asking and tough ship fire lining. <laughs> Gra <laughs> Grapnel anyone in sleeves lids, end day tilters, and the off book for gadding or grid scale into the working. Number six, time. To the, the thing is, to chat GPT, this makes just as much sense as anything, as anything else. Because yeah. it knows That's no true. sense. It, it, and the, right. somehow the grammar is like basically correct. It's right. yeah. the words are wrong. You know, they got like the sentence structure more or less. It's the correct. cadence. The cadence yeah. is right. It's almost like that uh, uh, def decombobulator script where the guy just kind of made up words. Here's the uh, the final synopsis from ChatGPT. Tweaking this agenda should be keened after each overarch and can be <laughs> retconned as a novel in sewing for the real trades, offering the core-most bond and long leg out the totted push for the primo for the grand tour. This overlocks a mule tier for PM skill and crossing the T's for... <laughs> Sorry, it's so hard to do this with a straight face. For a hotch tope, hotch lope that's big on the in the each and every which law peened for the eon tones and for the pair loose. It's a fern tick, the Swede for the R yet, and a Gadamar in the wowing. This shelving, yet crupper like the past, will be a decan in seeing through the labdos. And the four taped. This is a good day's egger and can cerement your rink in the big day, in the roll of the cut of the bins for a furry match at the call of the door. Good Thorpe and Viaton. <laughs> good Thorpe and Viaton good to Thorpe. you, too, Leo. I want more sign offs specifically in that style. <laughs> good Thorpe and Viaton. <clears throat> <laughs> this is, uh, you know, it's going to be 10 weird years, guys. That's genius. <laughs> I swear to God, that's better than Lewis Carroll. That's amazing. <laughs> the future is now. Wow. Good Thorpe. Action oils and the next right meeting's point black. Skype out the line to the new skiffs and Purdue to mount up for the up and joining and the take twos for the next meeting. <laughs> I love it. I really love it. All right, we actually, you know, remember last week when we were doing the obituaries? Oh, that's <clears> true, yep. Jeff asked Chat GPT Molly for his obituary, and it... Because I'm so old, it's coming <laughs> any minute. It couldn't do it, Listen, right? 
You got a good I six years left before you turn 100. So I asked Mr. it Chomsky. on the air live, and it gave me six paragraphs. We thought maybe we'd have AI Leo read you my obituary. Please, oh, no crying. That's a tough one. After all, I'm just an AI and he's still very much alive. But if I had to, I'd say he's been a real trailblazer in the world my of tech God. journalism. Oh, he's always been great. passionate about sharing his knowledge with others. And his dedication to his craft is truly inspiring. And let's not forget his legendary sense of humor. He's always been able to make us laugh, even when the news is grim. Oh, so here's to you, my God. May your jokes never Nobody's crying, I love Leo. that there's May one blonde woman in the audience. Never fail. <laughs> And I wish he had said it. Uh, he left it out. Good Thorpe and Fiat Hong. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with our That's picks incredible. of the week right after oh, this. Oh, Lord. <laughs> wow, I'm glad you brought that up. I hadn't seen any of yeah. these. These are amazing. So you, now you want that same. Can, can you get the same program to now read this stuff? Oh, yeah, out, but oh, out loud. In front of the AI. Uh, yeah. In front of your AI funeral Borders. scene, ideally. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, Anthony, <laughs> he is the keeper of the uh, AI. Um, here's a, here's plain text you can get from futurism. It does this as the good work of a web of art for the country, a mouse of science, an easy draw of a sad few. And finally, the global house of art, just in one job and the total rest. The development of such an entire real than land of time is the depth of the computer as a complex character. The education of these designed, important to them computer talents is a great average or one room spot for the word of a single part. The elite of its machine or talk is the book of life, and the shared essence of the self, of a family, is the white coat of the dove. Stand in the computer as the most important culture of success, and it is just an understatement. As we often say, good Thorpe and Vietnam. Good Thorpe and Vietnam. <laughs> I'm going to make, Vietnam. I'm gonna make that a, uh, a saying. That's a saying from now on. Absolutely. There was definitely an apostrophe in Viet on. It's V I E apostrophe yeah, and then something else. Viet. Yeah. On. Yeah. Viet on. Yeah. Okay. Good sort and Viet on. <laughs> uh, let us. Uh, I don't it's know if they. Secret, I don't know if they warned you, Molly. Message. We like to do picks at the end of the show. I'll give you a minute to think of something. Could be anything. A book. A play. A music. A uh, musical piece an of NFT. performance, an NFT that you really like, uh, cryptocurrency you believe everyone should buy, a website, <laughs> anything like that. Just think about it. Meanwhile, Paris Martineau, who has been All prepared. right, yeah, we're going um, deep. It might be a bit more than a minute because we're going into some deep TikTok lore here. Oh, I came across good. the other week I love that. Um, a TikTok from this young woman. Uh, we'll play a little bit of it. Uh, this woman talks about <laughs> something kind of interesting. All right, let's uh, let's listen. Does she have Do a name? Oh, it's to say. Maddie Hart Maddie. Soccer. Maddie Hart Soccer. What's it? trauma that you have that's funny it has to actually be funny i'll go first my dad abandoned my family when i was five years old that is um a wife and four kids he abandoned us and then pursued amateur break dancing and he got really good <laughs> he like blew this up this is like, essentially the gist of it he's, he's a famous like, amateur break dancer wow well you gotta follow your dreams shirt. is that so, him on her um, shirt I think it yes. is. Leo, Leo, it goes into he has a uh, a don't name, name. just Benny Hanna. They've got a couple of breakdancing videos in there. He competed, I believe, in the breakdancing Olympics. A lot of different stuff. This goes very viral. She talks about how he kind of abandoned her whole family, wouldn't pay for her medical bills. Then, if you uh, scroll down on that Twitter thread you have right there, the dad responds in a oh ten minute and thirty three second video while he's wearing a Bitcoin. Uh, a button-up uh -oh. shirt. And, That's for uh, you, Molly. you know, essentially, he says, one, totally normal divorce. I've paid a bunch of money in child support. Totally fine. I'd like you to skip to uh, about six minutes and 30 seconds. It's a long response. Right there. He says, break dancing was just a hobby. All right, let's go into... Sick. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> so then he, he break dances to prove the point. And this is ended up being very thematically right. 
separated in 2004 and divorced in 2005. I took up breakdancing entirely by accident in 2012. Yeah, as as one does. Days. Oops. As one does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops. I then just kept doing it. I'm now age 66. Now, some of you might be wondering, can he still breakdance at age 66? <laughs> He's really Nobody's so wondering so that, buddy. No one's I'll wondering it. it. Nobody's wondering it. Okay, man. He's he he standing in front of a giant of the Bitcoin, Bitcoin oh flag my. and an oh American oh flag. Oh. Here's what everybody's been looking for on TikTok a 66 year old guy <laughs> in front of an American flag and a Bitcoin flag, sort of breakdancing. <laughs> He'll get there. He'll spin eventually. There he goes. <laughs> That's well, you one. know, so this has been captivating my attention ever since, because I think a 10-minute reply video is a certain level of internet deranged to try and dunk on your daughter for saying that <laughs> That's you abandoned so terrible. her. Uh, That's then so terrible. Then people start looking into him a bit more. Once she responds, is like, I don't think his claims are accurate, whatever. Then people start digging into his past. Turns out he's a big-time right-wing influencer. Uh, of course he uh, is. Oh, he is. A like right wing culture warrior who okay. writes blog posts about actual U.S. history and complains about the wokes on like a Denise D'Souza podcast. And not only is he like you know internet conservative, he apparently was a speechwriter for Reagan, Bush, and Doyle. What? <laughs> um, William F. Buckley wrote the introduction to his campus memoir. Oh, my God. He's an OG member of the Heritage no, Foundation and Christian Coalition. This guy it's is not. He's padding his resume. Up. This isn't real, is it? Really? Let me uh, hear. I'll, I'll put is this, these this the isn't what here. the guy said? This is what people have found out about him? This is what people have found out by looking him up online. Holy moly. I do feel like I just thought it was a beautiful created... little internet wow. tale. Wow. Okay. TikToker, and I hope that she is getting over the trauma because clearly that is traumatic. That is the yeah. worst. And then to have your dad come back 10 minutes worth of BS in front of a Bitcoin flag. <laughs> At one point, she shows uh, some text messages from him, oh. one of which I believe is something to the effect of, <clears throat> hey, Mads, competing in the Olympic breakdancing competition today. Was it your birthday recently? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> You know oh, what, man. though? Not everything belongs on social media. No. no, definitely not. This has just been the rabbit hole I've been living in for the past couple of days, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. Thanks. Now we're in it. <laughs> there are two different breakdancing breaks in the 10-minute video. There's more? Uh, so, you know, there's, oh, wow. there's another time where he breaks to breakdancing. Oh, Enjoy at your own leisure. Oh, there's some nutty people in the world. That's all I know. Honestly, sometimes I really wish I didn't know. I kind of wish, <laughs> just, I just were in my own, I, I want to just walk in the garden and not, <clears throat> well, I guess, I don't know, should I share this pic with you? Why not? This is, this is more my cup of tea. I think Molly might be more into this as well. These are fonts, typefaces Ooh. that are actually mathematical Theorems, problems, or programs. I'll give you an example. This is a Sudoku font. Oh, God. Le <laughs> you should, you should I know. Love this. Leo that you, likes Sudoku. That you he has generate. No life. Wait a minute. He's that boring. Paris yeah. is cool. Now, this is a Sudoku. And as you solve the problem, it's a real Sudoku, the computer generated. As you solve the problem, it's going to spell out Paris is. Cool. Well, kind of. That's like seeing Wait, but like, stars how is in the it sky that it look like It's like one of those ox. magic eye things. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. see the highlighted squares when those... Yeah, went, well, they, they, they left they out in common? I mean, you could draw a letter on any of no, these. No, but these are... It's a real... Okay. Yeah, but look at all the things they didn't include. <laughs> I think the numbers are in order. Oh, they're in order. It's a okay, real that's Sudoku that's fun. font. Thank you. Okay. That's very cool. There's more. There's more. God, this is boring. <laughs> There's more. There's one. I like fonts. This There's more. Okay, now apparently it generates okay, a new it page. Forever. It generates a new page for I can't get back because uh, <laughs> I have to I have to click this link again because it generates a new page every time. So it's not just Sudoku. I know you don't like Sudoku. Uh, it's here's mazes. You could solve mazes. Here's a uh, how about a Tetris font? Oh, I like the Tetris. Font. Yeah. So oh. it's spelling out text right now. But let's say Jeff. Is old. <laughs> you almost spelled it Jif. Jif. Jif is old.
So now it, these are actually this is playing Tetris. It's playing the game to spell out. Well, kind of. What do you mean, kind of? It's doing the rules, man. Look, I've written Tetris solving code. This is the real deal, man. Jeff is old. <laughs> Don't you think that's <laughs> so much? <real? laughs> I do think that's pretty good. <laughs> Don't you think that's cool? <laughs> EricDomain.org, E-R-I-K-D-E-M-A-I-N-E. -E. Um, it's it's Ooh. they actually wrote a paper, Fun with Fonts, <laughs> Algorithmic Typography. And they've got a whole bunch of fonts that are algorithmic. It's actually really, I think, very interesting. But like I said, I knew that you'd hate it. So I think it's very cool. <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd like it, Molly. Look at this. This is coin sliding. It's you slide the coin. I just I don't know. I think it's kind of neat. Lots of them in here. Jeff, pick of the week. Oh, what do we choose from here? We should mention just just for the heck of it that People Magazine is 50 years old. And it's now owned by Dot and Dot, Dot Dash Meredith. Dash Meredith. To put junk out in the world. All right, that's one. 50. We could do a German that one. That can't be. Paul referred to as 50. Dead People Magazine. 50, 50 years old? 50 that years old, yep. possibly be true. EW is more than 30 years old now. Jeff, Hi, we're baby. getting old. Yeah, we are. Cover yeah, of are. Uh, the first People magazine, March 4th, 1974, was actress Mia Farrow from The Great Gatsby. Did you ever work for People? Yeah, yeah. I was the TV critic mm -hmm. of People. Uh -huh. So you know. Yeah. Where you, you were in the you first. My, to learn more book. about this, you'd have to read magazine. Uh, magazine, which is nice and short. It's about your length, Leo. You <laughs> Pocket <learn> sized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of fun facts. All right, well, that's one. Like that covers There's one. The dead that's one. people on them so You can have as many as you want. Okay, you got a choice. Do you want fondue wars or chocolate 3D printer? Oh, it depends if you want a savory or sweet. <laughs> savory or sweet, mm. kids. Okay, it's dessert time, so. Sweet. So chocolate, chocolate it is. 3D chocolate I'll have printer. one more. It's called the Cocoa Press. This is the kind of thing oh. back in the day Leo would have bought. <gasps> I want this now. <laughs> Today. Okay, buy oh. one, but then make a fun little thing and mail it. Oh, to they've been developing it for 10 years. Break free from the mold. Oh, my God. Oh, it's 1500 bucks. But what does it use to print? What's it, the it, filament? You, have, you, 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 it's, you buy this chocolate and you put it in there and you have to wait. Uh, it's in the, um, uh, oh. the other story. I think you have to wait like. 15 minutes for it to Well, that's not get bad. 3D printers take a long time. Oh, look at that. That's so oh, cool. I that. love a little boat. <laughs> There's a boat? Where's a boat? Let's see. Oh, There's that's like a so... little white chocolate tugboat. Oh, wow. Yeah, in the, in, the, in the video. In the prior. What? Oh, here, oh, yeah. Oh, so cute. Oh, and there you, you can eat it. That's the you thing. could he put said it's a little in waxy. chocolate fondue. It's a little waxy. You've tasted it. A little waxy. Yeah, there. Yeah. So you get this. You get this tube of chocolate, and then you put it in there, and you have to wait like twenty minutes. And then it gets warm. Oh! Oh! Look, he's eating his chocolate cup that he printed with his chocolate printer. I'm so glad we chose this. The bow this. is the standard print that comes out to check that your printer oh. is working. Yay! Oh. There so it is. Cute. And oh. you can eat it. You can eat your mistakes. All right, one more. Since I'm being accused of being the old guy, I want you to know <laughs> that I am hip. <laughs> look at he's got a I phone. Did you dial because that phone, Granddad? Look at, look, look, at, look at Molly. Look at Molly. She's just amazed that I have this. <laughs> Molly, I want you to know that you youngins are bringing this back. According to that, yeah, this is totally true. I, I love have legitimately, for year, like the last two years, been thinking about starting a collection of I bet you have phones some. that look cool. I bet I you have, have some. princess model. John, would you get me the phone that you uh, brought me? The way I met Jammer B, uh, John Slanina, our studio manager, one day many years ago. He, oh, many, <laughs> many. By the way, just to be clear. Jeff and I are the same age. We're both in 1492. Basically. We're both old. Okay, <laughs> yeah. he's not older than me. We're both old. We're both decrepit. I am a little older. A little, not much. You're in the same ballpark. Actually, what's weird is, uh, we, so we're we were trying to think of what we should do because Twit 1000 is coming, which is basically the 20th anniversary 
of Twitter. Wow. Wow. And, and uh, Leo, and, this is the time for our 24 hour stream. I think we should do it. Yes. So, back when I was first starting out, this was what phones looked like, kids. And, <laughs> wow. And you would I'm just, those of you listening, back in the day. You would it's click the old that. Get Me Central. Get Me Rewrite. Molly, get me rewrite. <laughs> Right, Jeff? Remember that? You would have to do this because yeah, yeah, there wasn't yeah, a dial. Yeah. So you'd have to do this like three times, four times. It was different things for depending on a party line. or. But to get to Central, you do that. Can I talk to Jeff Jarvis? That Jarvis with a J. Jarvis. Anyway, thank you, John. John brought me this. In fact, I think I wrote it on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> From Jammer B. <laughs> Or did you write that? That's awesome. Did I write that or did you write that? All right. So, uh, I'm good. I well, like so corded phones. old phones are coming back, folks. I think co corded phones are great. Wait, that means you got to get I a I had a rotary one, right? phone up until like... Did you? Yeah. How did you... I mean, you not me really? personally, my family. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It was your actual phone. Yeah. Wow. I'm not, yeah. Wow. I'm not that Until young. how long ago? Uh, I was... It was... At some point, I had a babysitter who my parents were worried wouldn't know how to operate the rotary <laughs> phone. And so that's when we lost it. <laughs> that's hysterical. Well, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Those, those, uh, what was it called? It wasn't DTMF. The, uh, the clicks, the phone company at some point said, you know, we're not going to interpret that anymore. You're going to have to send dial tone down, DTMF down. But the pulse, that's what it was, right? Pulse, yeah. The pulses. Yeah. Uh, so, you may remember when you dialed zero, go. Ch -ch 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 -ch, it would send that many pulses out, which is why. So you're you're both way too young for a princess model. Oh, I wish I had a princess phone. You know what I you want? You know what that is? You don't know what that I is? I think I know what that is. <gasps> oh, Paris, model. it's the first one you have to get in your collection. Oh, okay, oh, oh, cool. Leo, find a princess it. model. I'm. I was thinking the first one would be one of those Garfield phones that keeps washing up. I think the coast of France or Britain. <laughs> what? But what? Wait a I'll, minute. What? Do you not know about this? No. What? What's that all? Okay. What? Search Garfield phone washing up. Did did a uh, ship carrying cargo? <laughs> this has been a Tragedy. mystery for forever. There had been, uh, since the 1980s, bright orange fragments of this Garfield novelty phone had been washing up on the coastline in Brittany, France, for years. They couldn't figure out how or why uh, or what was going on. But apparently France Info, um, I think, had publicized something. They eventually, I think, found that there was a shipping container yeah. somewhere yeah. off the coast that had burst open and was leaking phones. <gasps> Garfield phones. <laughs> but I want one of the Garfield you know, phones. I, think, I think of all the great. kids waiting for their Garfield phone and it never came. I know. Or I'll put in the in the Discord, Paris, this is the other one you might want. Okay, great. This, this comes is a good from idea. my history I'm do here. This now. <gasps> is the Sports Illustrated sneaker phone. Oh. Also the football phone. You need the, the football foot, phone. The famous Time football Magazine phone football phone, yeah. Yeah. Does yeah. the sneaker phone have a speaker phone? Uh, <laughs> it's a sneaker hold speaker. Hold on, I'm putting you on sneaker. <laughs> the <laughs> sneaker putting you on sneaker. I love it. Well love played. It. Well played. What was the name of the phone? This is this, this is the classic phone. It was very very uh, Art Deco. The the dial was underneath. You'd stand up. Oh, and it yes. would Stand up. You know, like what I'm talking about. It's very modern. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could find one of those. That would be cool. It'd be it'd be like um, things you'd see at the World's Fair. It's the vintage. Hold on, I found it. I found one. Well, you're good. Your hold Google Foo is on. good. Going into the Discord right now. Your Google Foo is fantastic. Here we go. How did you Did's find that so fast? I just what you said. I said phone with dial on bottom. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, this is it. The Ericsson. Oh. Oh, you can still buy them. Oh, that's a great looking that's phone. That's a fun one. <gasps> Space Age. Yeah. That I is a great Space looking Age phone. Stuff. And see on the bottom, uh, that's, oh, this one's, no, it's a dial. I thought it was buttons. But that's see, this is going to be post problematic for my idea with these phones. So I want to mount them all on a wall, kind of in a display. I don't really know. No, how you got to use them, Paris. You can't, you can't get just... like a little um, I cannot box. use. I cannot use dozens of land. You have to do exactly what Molly just said. Phone. I'm going to put you on sneaker 
<laughs> you have to use them. You have to. Jessica, <laughs> Jessica, we could talk about the story in a moment, but I've got to put you on sneaker. Got to put you on sneaker. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Um, oh. Molly, it sounds like you're talking me talking to me through a phone that's been washed up on the shore of Brittany, oh. France, for 30 years. Well, that was always Here's the uh, other one. Here's the other one. Oh, this is you're you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna cavell over this one, Leo. Okay, hold on a second. He's hold putting it in the Discord this. right now. That was Discord, the Erico phone. Now the vintage cream. Oh yes, the donut oh, phone. The donut this phone. This one's gorgeous. That is Isn't really it? Oh my gosh. gorgeous. Is the it colors, is? the Sculptura. yellow one up there, the blue one. Oh, which would you I get? The cream color. I like it the cream color. It looks like colored. a purse. <laughs> Yeah. I think I would get either oh, the blue one or nice. the slightly more yellow one because I think those are colors that would fit with my current apartment aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> and after all, that's important. So kids, the other thing about phones back in the day is you didn't own them. It's like cable boxes. You had to rent them from the from the telephone company. Well, it's nice. These are actual Western electric phones. You paid every month a fee yeah. to rent the phone, adding up to 100 times more than the phone cost. You were not allowed to put anything else on the phone line. So modems were extremely controversial and were for a while in some places illegal because you couldn't hook anything else into the phone system. Mom How about this one, Paris? It doubles as a handbag. Or is it well, for putting what, in your I, handbag? I thought it looked like a purse. <laughs> it's handbag yeah. size. Uh, I wonder if they just think it looks like a Maybe handbag. Maybe that's it because I don't see anywhere you'd put anything. Wait a minute, it's yeah. called the handbag phone. Handbag phone. Oh, cool. <laughs> shaped like that. Maybe just the shape. Because it would be fun if it were actual handbag. <laughs> Carry That's that around. Idea. All right, Molly, I've given you a lot of time to think of a pick of the week. Do you have anything for us? Uh, yeah, I was going to point to the Wikipedia article uh, on the lamest edit wars. <laughs> Um, uh, less anyone thinks you, that Wikipedia editors were, were are Were you too. part of this lamest edit war? It's a list of them. Oh. So I don't think I've been a part of any of them. Okay, I think it's really funny. The disclaimer up top says, this page contains in bold material that is kept because it is considered humorous. <laughs> Such material yes. is not meant to be taken seriously. We like to warn people before we get too crazy on No Wikipedia. irony on Wikipedia. <laughs> Um, my favorite one is towards the bottom where people were edit warring, which is really just when you're editing back and forth between versions of a page over whether or not we could call the tiger the world's most powerful cat. <laughs> <laughs> These are hysterical. The things people fight over. Uh, oh, yeah. The Bee Gees, are they a British or Australian group? Freddie Mercury. Uh, what's his true ancestry? Jennifer Aniston, is she American or American-born? Is she Greek-American, English-American, Greek and English-American? Does she need all those prefixes? <laughs> uh, so Copernicus, P.G. Woodhouse, Werner Herzog, Saladin, all of these have been edit war subject matter. Which one is your favorite here? The, the last, tiger. The tiger. It's, it's towards the bottom. Towards the bottom. Know. Is the tiger the most... Well, that's a really good question. Is the tiger the most <laughs> powerful cat? I don't Complete know. Complete with accusations that people were tiger fanboys. A revert war... <laughs> it gradually tiger... led to arguments about how tigers would match up versus bears and crocodiles. Oh, my. <laughs> Complete with another revert war about the inclusion of a YouTube video showing a tiger fighting a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, I love it. Well, thank you for the work you do, by the way, on, not just on Wikipedia, but on Web3 is going great. Uh, on your newsletter, everything that you do, we are so glad to be able to talk to you. We've been fans of yours forever, Molly. So thank you. Thank you for <laughs> followers. Yeah, followers and fans. Mollywhite.net is a list of all uh, of the wonderful things you can do she's she speaks regularly she gives talks and lectures so maybe consider her for that uh, you can read her uh, her uh, newsletter it's free which is really great um, and you could support her work directly if you want you have a you have a patreon or you can just send her money just send her money <laughs> 
Yeah, send you can subscribe money. to send the newsletter, money. send me money. Yeah. yeah. Slip uh, like really, cash under my door. Slip some cash. Absolutely. Slip some cash under, your, <laughs> under her door. Send her an old phone. Yeah. <laughs> Paris, Paris, I found it for you. You can get the Garfield phone. You can buy one. Oh, I did see. That's what I'm doing after this. I've got it queued up. <laughs> I got to find the best. I kind of want that sneaker phone now. <laughs> I think that, yeah. 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 Listen, I've been thinking for years. I'm on the verge of going, being a, a collector of old phones. And now is the time. Oh, well, we've really, me. we tapped something here. Yeah. Oh, it's only $195. Holy I cow. That's the thing. Is I, got, I got to look for some. I got to look for some better. Uh, I'm seems... fine with being untested. It doesn't you can start work. collecting the parts that wash up and assemble your own. Just, you know, it'd be so, almost cheaper to go to the north of France and just collect <laughs> wait parts. Wait the water. Yeah, just wait yeah. into the water. Just wait. Here comes a phone. I think you could have a phone collection in your house. You don't have to wire them up. No, definitely. I... I I've thought about it. I will display them on a wall. I've I think it's a, a, yeah, it's a shelf. You need a shelf. Yeah. yeah. Paris Marno writes for the information. What are, are you working on a big story right now? Uh, I published something last week that I forgot to put in the rundown. Uh, we can talk about it next week. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. Oh. Well, we will. We'll talk about it next week. Uh, you can also send her a tip. Now, have you yet? I have tr keep trying on Signal to be using my uh, username instead of my phone number. You have to be in the beta it's a beta. beta still. Yeah. So we're still giving out her phone number, 267-797-8655. But hey, soon. And, uh, you know, there may have been some Twig listeners that reached out over the last week with helpful tips. And for that, I thank you. You know who you are. What Ooh. What are you looking for? What kind of, what would, you know, you want some real skullduggery? Scoops you want. Well, you want a big I scoop? mean, yeah. In startups doing uh, shady things. Um unreported major moves you know oh if you i think like it's that interesting yep let me know about it long walks with ai yeah if you know who a if you had eyes on leo during his long walk <laughs> yes we definitely want that we'll pay you with a phone it's true there's a scooby-doo phone, phone i saw in there or there's a kermit the frog phone it could be yours there's lots of phones in our discord jeff jarvis is the Director of the Town Knight Center for Entrepreneurial Journalism at the Craig Newmark. Craig, 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 Newmark. Graduate Newmark. School of Journalism at the City University of New York. Uh, soon to be deorbited, and uh, but he's going to land in another. But place. he's going to orbit again. Yeah, yes, I am. I yeah, am. over an, around a new planet. How exciting! Well, thank you for being here, Molly White, Jeff Jarvis. Yay. Thank you, Molly. Yes, yeah, so great to have you. Paris Martineau. Thanks, Molly. Thanks to all of you who Always join thank us. thank you, Paris. So this is why you are a Club Twit member, right? Because of great shows like this one. If you want to, well, cool. if you hated this show, forget I said that. But if you want to support any of our <laughs> just shows. Just do it out of charity. Just, just if you hated it, we need pity. it. Yeah, just yes. go Listen, to Twit. You need things to hate. Hating <laughs> it's is good. an essential part it's of life. Pay for the show so that you can hate it more. Absolutely. $7 a month is worth it, isn't it? For just that feeling of, oh, I hate this show. Uh, go to twit.tv slash club twit. You will get ad-free versions of this show and all the shows we do. You'll get access to the Discord, which is a great amount of fun, as you probably noticed. You also get uh, special stuff we don't put out in public. We appreciate your support. It's what keeps us going. Twit.tv slash club twit. We do this show every uh, Wednesday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that's 2200 UTC. I say that because you can watch us do it live. It's, you don't have to. But uh, if you want to, youtube.com slash twit. We go live when the show begins. We turn off the stream when the show's over. You couldn't get on-demand versions of the show at the website, twit.tv slash twig. You can, of course... Uh, watch it on YouTube. There's a YouTube channel dedicated to This Week in Google. Best thing to do, though, get yourself your favorite podcast client. We like Pocket Casts, but uh, Google has one. Actually, Google doesn't have Not one anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Google used to have one. Apple has one. <laughs> That's right. Why did it? What did, uh. Uh, subscribe, just not in Google Podcasts, and that way you'll get it automatically the minute it is available. Thanks for being here, everyone. Thanks to our wonderful panel. And as I always say at the end of every show, and I've said for the last 15 years, good Thorpe and Viet on. Oh.